Hi, Yak is here. So today is a bit different video. This is like very long form video for my channel. Usually I do like relatively edited guide videos, but today I want to take you on a journey from zero to hero when it comes to blueprint factories. So I will be designing the personal storage factory that can produce steel items and heavy modular frames. And this is sort of like expansion on the idea of all-in factory like this factory that I released previously. This is iron factory that can produce everything from well your typical cables, wires, iron plates, iron rods, and you know, like rotors, modular frames, reinforced iron plates and screws. It have a bit of like built-in logic, you know, like very pretty exterior, which is like art deco, must be some brutalism and modern gradients. And well, uh, this is like self-contained unit, once again, that can be used as a part of the personal storage. Uh, I already done similar factory in the past, but as you can see here is a lot of like Z fighting. Uh, overall design is like brutalism, but honestly it's like a lot of to be desired, for example on the roof, on the angles, uh, the intakes are complete math. Math? What? Mess. So, let's go with the basics. Alright, we are interested in heavy modular frames and Perfect starting point is usually to actually know your alternative recipes and what is the item that you are dealing with, uh, where you will be using it in the future, or what items are required for this item, you know, like, there is a lot of things that you can actually um, know from the wiki page. So here we have several alternative recipes, and first stop is our standard recipe. Honestly, well, this recipe is not great. Because if you compare it to heavy encased frame, uh, aside us actually swapping screws for the concrete, uh, it's basically the same production ratios, like we are using pretty much the same amount of encased industrial beams, a bit more steel pipes, a bit less modular frames, but we are using a bit more in terms of concrete, but we are not using like 200 screws. Uh, and at the same time we have the better production ratio, so just looking at the ratio you can see that, well, this recipe is direct upgrade of heavy modular frames, standard recipe. Uh, same goes if you go for the power requirements over here. As you can see over here we have an uh, alternative recipe for heavy encased frame. It is using like 10k megajoules and the normal recipe is using like 17k, even like 18k. So yeah, this is like a lot of power just wasted. So definitely alternative recipe for heavy encased frame is the way to go. Also, we have like flexible frames, but issue with the flexible frame that it is using rubber. And my general rule of thumb for these early blueprints, for these mid-game blueprints, is that, well, you know, like, I don't want to use rubber or plastic, because it requires extra factories, extra refineries, extra logistics, and I'm kind of fine with rubber and plastic in later blueprints, when we are talking about things like radio control units, supercomputers, you know, stuff like that. Uh, then exporting rubber and plastic is all right. But for this early stage of the game, I really want to just avoid rubber and plastic if possible. So yeah, we are talking about heavy encased frames. So let's start with our schematic. So this is uh, satisfactorytools.com, really uh, my favorite tool to actually use to plan satisfactory factories. As you can see, I have a bunch of those over here. And we will start with heavy module frames. So let's actually put the heavy module frame over here on the list. Also, my browser for some reason is a bit laggy. Mm, whatever. Uh, yeah. Sometimes actually recording some things is not ideal, you know? So I actually inserted my production ratio for heavy module frames. But over here, you can see that we are using the standard recipes, so I actually need to change that in the settings over here, so we go for the settings, uh, let's go for the heavy module frames, over here we see the alternative recipe for a heavy encased frame, and if it is like straight up great, usually it will swap on itself, if it is not swapping, we need to disable the normal recipe over here, for example, uh, but in this case we do not need to actually swap anything, so there is that. So this is like general idea, and there are a lot of places where we can actually improve things quite a lot, uh, especially when it comes to the alternative recipes. So, uh, first stop would be our modular frames and reinforced iron plates. This is one of those items 
that you definitely need to improve upon over here because yeah 3.75 assemblers and 225 assemblers well it's quite a lot of assemblers to actually put into one all-in-one factory so i kind of know about the heavy module frames and module frames and reinforced iron plates because i done them previously and those items well they have very interesting alternative recipes there are a lot of choices over here but for the most part uh, our choice over here would be uh, the best production ratio not the most efficient recipe but best production ratio so for the bolted frames it would be uh, this recipe which is well bolted frame not the module frame standard not the steel frame uh, probably i want to go for the bolted frame I'm not quite sure yet, uh, maybe I'm not right, maybe the steel frame is the way to go, uh, we need it to see. But when it comes to reinforced iron plates, I kind of know that, well, there is not a lot of choices over here. The most efficient recipe is teach iron plate period, uh, but it is using iron wire, or well, not iron wire like normal wire, but we can use it with the iron wire for example, but production ratio of this recipe is not the best. And the best production ratio is 100% is bolted iron plate. Uh, yes, it's not so efficient resource-wise, because well, screws eat quite a lot of steel, but it is just all around the best recipe ever for the space limitations, you know, like blueprint limitations. Uh, so yeah, this one is definitely one that we will be using in our factory. And once again, I am avoiding rubber, no rubber, period. So let's go for the bolted plates. So we go for the recipes over here. We go for the bolted plates, bolted iron plates. And straight out of the gate, it will swap or it will not swap. Yes, it will not swap because we need to remove recipe from here. So reinforced iron plate. So this goes way of the dodo. And over here we have finally our alternative recipe. For bolted iron plates and as you can as you can see straight off the gate we are already removed like what 2.5 extra assemblers not 2.5 sorry 1.5 extra assemblers from our factory just one alternative recipe so this is why like using the alternative recipe and experimenting with uh, the schematic is really important because without that we cannot really like plan and build factory just making things in the game you know so there is that uh the next step is to deal with the module frames so i'm curious what is better bolted uh, bolted frames or steel frames so let's start with the bolted frame let's check out our recipe so it is not swapping so let's remove the module frames from the equation the standard recipe so we remove that and now we can see the bolted frame recipe in our schematic uh, so this doesn't look really bad but i'm not quite sure i think like steel frame will be better let's see steel frame so let's see so it's actually automatically swapping to the steel frame and as you can see, yeah, steel frame is using quite a lot of, uh, well, assemblers. So probably it is not the best choice. I don't think so. We'll see later. So for now, I'll be choosing the bolted uh, frames and bolting the iron plates. So next step is to choose our screw production. So the screws is kind of easy one because, well... Uh, if you are using steel, well, steel screws is no-brainer. If you are not using steel, well, cast screws is direct upgrade of the screws. This is just the way how it goes. So let's go for the steel screws. Pretty straightforward. Steel screw. Uh, it will probably automatically swap. Not. It will not. Well, this is annoying <laughs> today. So let's go for the screws over here and remove them from the equation. Here you go. And now we sort of uh, at 1.5-ish constructors for the steel screws. Uh, we are doing iron plates, steel beams, steel ingots, iron ingots, steel pipes, concrete. Uh, in case industrial beams. So just knowing things, I think like in case industrial beam is the next stop where we can improve our schematic. 
So let's think about encased industrial beams. Uh, where is that? Uh, nowhere here. So... Well, this browser is definitely laggy when I'm recording 4K game on the background, like that. Definitely takes some time to actually load things. Yeah, I actually never done this before. Like, record game on the background at the same time when I have the browser open. And also, yeah, for some bizarre reason, Satisfactory Wiki is not as fast when it comes to the server. Because, yeah, my connection is definitely better than this loading time. Alright, so while this thing actually loads, let's actually look on the schematic one more time. So, what are the weak points over here? So, bolted iron plates over here is not an issue, definitely. <laughs> Module frames over here? I'm not quite sure. But, once again, it comes to a amount of the assemblers. So, we have assemblers over here, assemblers over there, assemblers over here. So this is like mm, approximately like five assemblers, maybe four, maybe only three. Then there is a manufacturer and the constructor land. So with the constructor land, we have foundries, we have smelters, and a bunch of constructors. Hmm. This is interesting. This is interesting. We can do a lot of improvements over here, definitely. But for now, let's check out the encased industrial pipes and encased industrial beams. So, there is only one alternative recipe, and to an extent, uh, it is an upgrade, but this upgrade comes at the cost of the production ratio, so I'm not quite sure do I want to use an in case industrial pipe yet. Uh, it all comes to the previous production steps, because if you go for the previous production steps, well, this is using, for example, 4.5 constructors for concretes. Concretes? For concrete. Uh, extra constructors for the steel beams, and we will be swapping steel beams to the steel pipes with encased industrial beam. So let's check it out. Right, so here we go. Encased industrial pipe. And what is the difference? Well, we're still using one steel beam for the, constra for the steel screws, and we are using quite a lot of steel pipes for encased industrial pipe. Build work. I'm not quite sure. Hmm. This is an interesting puzzle. You know, like, it's always this uh, production ratio game. Also, I want to store some items, so I'll be adding extra items on top of that. So this is, like, not the end goal. We want to produce, like, extra uh, steel pipes, uh, extra steel screws, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I definitely want to store some concrete over here, because overall production ratio of concrete is quite high. Uh, I definitely want to store some... Uh, reinforced iron plates and bolted frames. You know what? I think like steel pipes uh, would be like the main item that I will be producing in this blueprint. And in this case, I think yeah, bolted frame is a bit of out of place. So I think I will be using the steel frames. Uh, so let's go for the steel frame. As you can see, even with uh, some recipes being better than others, there is still quite a debate when it comes to the blueprints, especially like space-wise, the precursor item-wise, you know, there are a lot of like moving parts. Uh, and the thing is, I, as I remembered before, this is like 2.5 assemblers for the steel frames, and this is quite an interesting ratio. So this is like exactly a, like 250 overclocked assembler, to actually produce required amount of module frames. This is why I'm kind of sort of like interested in the whole thing, and also over here I can see that this is also can be the downscale to one single assembler. Uh, so this is interesting possibility over here. And then we have like bolted iron plates uh, at only 30% capacity. So I'll start to add other items that I want to store in this blueprint. Because well I have like six storage containers period. Uh, and I want to store some items that I want to use in my, well, factories, you know and, well, construction. So, reinforced iron plates. I think this ratio would be something about 2.5 to actually get to 50%. Is it? Yeah, this is exactly 2.5 reinforced iron plates per minute to get to 50% assembler. Um, I definitely can go higher. I'm not quite sure will I go higher or not, because we have iron ingots and iron plates over here. Uh, we already actually at quite a an amount of iron ore used over here. 
So this is also sort of a limitation. And we have like 50% steel screws. Uh, the steel beam constructor that is chilling quite a lot. So I think I will be adding the steel beams, the steel beam production over here, 100%. So for the frames, uh, I will be doing probably like on of logic. So we'll be adding only zero over here, nothing extra on production of steel frames, because I definitely want to condense that to one assembler. Uh, if I will go through two assemblers, then I will add extra modular frames. But this maybe will, maybe will not be the case with the iron ore and coal inputs. Uh, and to be fair, I can go higher than that. I can go for like 480 iron ore. But then there is the question, do I have enough space to make all the foundries and smelters? So there is an issue also. All right. So over here, I think I will add a bit of in case industrial beams. Uh, probably it will be like very low ratio, like, you know, like one. <laughs> yeah, it's even lower than one. Wow. This is really close. So actually, 250%. So let's experiment with 0 0.75. That doesn't work. Uh, 65? No, that doesn't work either. So 61. Uh, 63, I guess. Yeah, almost there. So it's one... 15 probably or 25 mm, let's see 25 yeah exactly the ratio that i want so this is like fully overclocked assembler over here uh, in case industrial beams reinforced iron plates so they start to look like actually an actual schematic that i want to work with and once again like previously i actually mentioned that overclocking assemblers is kind of a hassle you know like it's a lot of like extra power it's extra 35 megawatts of power uh, compared to things like constructors and smelters but we are talking about the stage we are already when we are already making like heavy modular frames and at this stage if you do not have like really great call setup or if you are not doing like two stages to make like your fuel setup for the fuel power well you are doing something wrong so the power requirements for this blueprint is not as tight for as for things like for example iron factory you know so this is why i'm pretty all right with overclocking assemblers but we still have a lot of other things over here and those other things are our screws steel beams steel ingots iron ingots man this is like this ratio is a bit of an issue over here i'm not a fan of that like 4.5 plus so we definitely can go higher here i think not quite sure uh, but we will see. Alright, so what I can do over here? <laughs> Let's think. So here's the thing, I think uh, we could not really do a lot about this schematic. Uh, because I still want to be under like 270 iron ore. And for that probably I will need to reduce production ratios of in case industrial pipes. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see. Almost there. Yeah. With this ratio, we are exactly there. Uh, so this will work in terms of input resources. Uh, and here's the thing. Yeah, as I expected. So right now I can totally like plop two foundries. One foundry at 200%. One foundry at 250%. And then I plop one iron ingot smelter at maybe two. I think I will fit two, yeah, uh, which with, which would be like one smelter with slight overclock, which is completely fine. Uh, then we have iron plate constructor, probably one, maybe not, I'm not quite sure, uh, because I can work with, if I'm working with like two smelters over here, I can funnel them directly into two iron plate constructors, so there is the possibility over there. Uh, so this is like probably considering the industrial storage containers on the first floor, so this is like the first floor worth of machinery. Uh, then I'm thinking about the manufacturer and manufacturer would be a very interesting feature. Uh, I think that I will not be placing the manufacturer inside of the blueprint itself. I will be plopping the manufacturer on the roof. And for that I will be need to, uh, I will need to make a lot of like extra conveyor lift calls. 
but I have this idea in my head that I actually did not test yet, so we will see how it will work. So manufacturer is not an issue in this schematic, but everything else, you know, so we sort of need to deal with that. So the assemblers is definitely the third floor, uh, and right now we are looking at something like, if you are overclocking things, we are looking at exactly three assemblers because this is like 250%, this is almost like 250%, and this is only 50%. So there is that, and this is leaves us with constructors on the second floor. And yeah, there's, there's like quite a lot of constructors. So uh, this is two constructors. Uh, this is maybe one extra constructor, but over here we have a lot of things. So this is a lot of production. So let's think. So three constructors, and we definitely have the room for five more. Uh, we can go higher than that, but I would prefer not. But at the same time, if you think about if you are using only three assemblers over here, we definitely have the space for four constructors over there. So if you think about that, well, we can move these concrete constructors on the third floor if we are overclocking our assemblers. So this leaves us with the constructors over here, and this is total of 6.5 constructors, and we have totally the space for total of 5 constructors. So this is like only one constructor at 200%, or maybe like two at 150% when we are talking about steel pipes. So yeah, this is like really chill blueprint. So we can do one overclock constructor over here, um, two constructors there, and total of like, you know, five constructors for the steel pipes with two overclocked. And over here we are doing basically four constructors, and one of those constructors, or maybe two, will be overclocked to facilitate, facilitate extra 70%. And overclocked assemblers over here. Yeah, actually not a lot of space if you think about the whole blueprint. But at the same time, well, I think this will work. And also I think I can go even higher than those ratios. But do I actually want to go higher? Uh, I, I can go higher on concrete production. 100%. So I actually can increase the production ratios for concrete. So let's go with something that will be exactly 5 constructors. And I think it would be not a lot of extra concrete. So this would be just slightly more concrete that I'm producing right now. It would be like 4.5 and stuff, I think. Yeah, 4.5 concrete. And we are exactly at 5 constructors, so this is like exactly 2 power shards extra over here. Uh, then is there any like small bits that I can actually improve? Let's think. So I will be definitely storing steel pipes. So over here I can actually overclock this to exactly 6.5. So let's go for there. Oh, wait a second. Maybe I could not really do that. So this will require steel ingots and steel ingots will require iron ore. So if I go this way, well, then I'm sort of like defeating the purpose. All right, so let's start actually make our blueprint the fun part, you know. Probably like half people already like tuned out <laughs> from my buffling about, uh, you know, like blueprint factors and schematics. But well, this is like the nature of the beast. So let's start with our industrial storage containers. And over here I will be actually aligning them exactly that center. And as you can see, you cannot like align them exactly that center. So I will be using the notch tool with button H. And then I will hold my control button and use the half steps instead of the full steps like that. So I'm using my arrow keys right now. And if you can hold the control button, you are using arrow keys as well, but you are moving your container in the half steps, which allow me to align things perfectly like that. So here we go. The first one uh, couldn't really actually like snap the things to the sides. So I still need to use the notch tool for the next one. And the next one, like this, like this. And in this fashion, everything is like, you know, flush with each other. You do not have this weird gap like I used to have previously. So for example, over here I have this, like this weird gap, which is like, <laughs> what is that, you know? 
like let's make things flush you know like this so this will work 100 also i prefer to actually paint my containers black because yeah this is like containers unless if they are like exposed you know so the next step is to actually start to sort out my production of well everything so if you think about we have like iron ore we have coal and also there is the thing that probably someone will say well why, why are you not using like solid steel ingots and reason for that is that well solid steel ingots will require a lot of extra foundries while it's better resource wise it's definitely not better the space wise so there's that this is like sort of unfortunate so yeah the foundries probably i will use them closer and foundries are exactly well you can use like three foundries in one blueprint but over here i'm using two and i will be plopping like two smelters so can i actually fit two smelters yes this is really close but i can actually fit the smelters this is nice news because i was kind of worried about the whole thing so let's think what is the first that i want to place is it like foundries or is it smelters i'm not quite sure so foundries will feed the, the steel constructors um hmm and constructors for steel screws when iron ingots will be feeding iron plate constructors and that's it hmm this is like interesting puzzle so if uh, this will go there and there will be like iron constructors and this will go here wrap around or not not quite sure not quite sure hmm so yeah probably i will start my gem with foundries over here so first of all i want actually to make my mergers over here where is the merger here we go the merger and this is right on the edge of the blueprint so merger number one and merger number two would be there so this is leaves uh, this leaves us with uh, quite a lot of space to actually bring the thing into the merger yes this will work and then we are talking about this like that so we are talking about steel, uh, steel ingots once again if you go for like solid steel ingots uh, we will be required to make a lot more steel ingots and a lot of more foundries so the normal recipe and the thing is why it's like more machinery like it looks convoluted but it's more machinery because we need to place more uh, iron ingot smelters and they actually require a lot of space so this is why normal recipe is sort of like better so when it comes to space you know it's not better for the resources 100 percent so this is like approximation right now so our output would be 1.12.5 uh, uh, which is together obviously we do not see anything together but well it will fit on mark 3 belt which is nice so we can use mark 3 belts over here to actually connect things so this will probably work like that and then we have ah, two foundries uh two smelters sorry into two constructors so if i are doing like two smelters into two constructors directly well first of all we need to overclock them and once again this is like 2.25 this is like which is like 225 percent which is uh as i recall correctly one point uh, my, 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 my math is kind of out of the window so let's use the calculator so let's divide 225 by 2 which would be 112.5 112.5 so this is not the most efficient way of doing things because this way will require two power shards but for example if we go for just 25 we will be required only one shard so this is like an issue do i sacrifice one extra power shard to actually use less space or not hmm not quite sure so probably not so this would be like probably the manifold still so let's go for the manifold in any case 
Also, wait a second. I can still go for like uh, constructor, constructor, uh, smelter to constructor, uh, smelter to constructor. So this would be like 100% uh, on smelter, 125% uh, on other smelter, and the same for the constructors. Huh, so that can actually work. And if that actually works, this means I can actually bring those smelters flush with the side of the blueprint, and this opens up another possibility when we are talking about inputs for our blueprint. So yeah, this means that I will be doing things like this. 100%. Uh, then I will be placing foundries like that. This is the mergers. So let's do the merger. And probably I will be aiming this merger into this direction because I actually want to have this like U turn over here with my steel ingots. Yeah. So let's place second foundry like this. And let's place another merger. Although this is not like necessary, but I still prefer to use mergers when possible. Right, so this is like steel ingots, 250%. Let's copy that and paste that over here with Control C and Control V. Quite a handy feature. Uh, then we will have like iron ingots. One of those would be like 125%. Ah, uh, come on. And another one would be 100%. So here we go. So now let's actually think about our intakes. So intakes, intakes, intakes. Uh, how we will be doing things. So, 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 so. So over here I want to have inputs. Will I make inputs like this? Mm, or this? I think this is not possible. Or possible. Hmm. It's actually possible. So yeah, we can do it like this. Splitter over here, another splitter over there. And then it will be like wrapping around into foundries. So this will work. So now it is connected. Only question over here, uh, what type of the belt I am using. So do I go with the Mark IV belts or not? Man, I'm not quite sure. So I actually copied uh, this factory. So this is with Mark III belts, no Mark IV belts for input of iron ore. This is like the production ratios. Yeah, I think I go this way. This will work, work better in my opinion. I just don't want to deal with Mark IV belts over here and to have extra logic on the intake of the blueprint. So let's go for the Mark III belts over here. Uh, then we are wrapping things over here with more splitters. So do, do I make splitters flush or not? Mm -hmm. And this is like always like an issue with the uh, splitters. Could not really like place things correctly. So this is why probably I will go with something a bit longer like this. This will work. And also I think I can go like this. This is like not really a pressing matter. So I can go like this, like this, and then I can go like this. Like 100%. Yeah, this will not make a lot of like issues with the uh, connections for the uh, industrial storage containers. So this is our iron ore. So this is how we will be inputting the iron ore from here, here. And then we need to input our coal and our limestone because yes, we have the constructors for the concrete. So this is would be like triple intake. And for that reason, well, we have, well, perfect driver, like something like this. And I think like if you think about this, well, yeah, this would be probably like ideal placement. Only question over here, can I connect mm, this? Couldn't really connect, but once again, it will always snap probably to the splitter itself. 
so this is not like an issue and over here man this is like clipping that i do not like so probably this way will not work for me so probably i will go like that is my intakes oh also i double placed it so here we go uh this will probably work i can leave with a bit of clipping over here like that for my uh, limestone but for the coal this means that it would be the intake over here 100 percent also i can do a bit different approach and the different approach would be something like um <laughs> something like this or maybe even this so i actually can go this way and i can make uh, the intake like this so this will work in my book so this would be like limestone input and this would be like coal input hmm. yeah that works i think this is like interesting way of doing things definitely yep let's do this uh, also i need some space for my at least one power switch and i think this is like exactly the amount of space that i really can work with yep this will definitely work so over here i will have the power switch for my heavy module frames maybe extra power switch for something else yep this works this works so let's now sort let's sort our call over here for our foundries also once again so we are dealing with 4.5 foundries over here so we can actually underclock one of those to only 200 percent like that so we need to input call so how i do this do i go just like mm, is it aimed exactly not really so i actually want to aim this thing exactly And this means that I need to use splitter over here. Then I actually aim the whole thing over here. And try to use conveyor lift. Let's see, can I use a conveyor lift with that? Uh, probably it will not work. Uh, yeah, by the looks of it, it will not work. Actually, I do not hear the audio cue. Because I playing without sound, because I'm using the microphone and the speakers. <laughs> so I but from my experience I know this will not work. So we need a bit different way of actually connecting things. And I think like, yeah, this is like not an issue to make the things like this. So yeah. The merger or splitter over here. Or just turn the whole thing around on its side like this. Only issue over here is a bit of clipping, maybe. I don't sure. I'm not sure. No, this is like almost no clipping. This is more of like soft clipping. That is not a huge deal. So yeah, this will work for the call, 100%. So over here we can make things like that, or we can make things a bit prettier. Uh, for example, we can go with something that will be like this. Also, it's actually scuffed. So let's go for the normal pole over here. Let's make pole like this. Let's connect this to this and then connect this to this. And this sort of looks pretty. Also, I prefer to remove poles because reasons. You know, like one steel, bro. <laughs> so, yeah, this works for the coal. This works for the iron. And we have output over here and two smelters that will be connected directly to constructors. So this is not bad start for this blueprint. This is quite fine. So we can actually start working on the second floor. So second floor, second floor, second floor. Second floor would be exactly one meter higher than placement of this. Ah, uh, come on, game. Can you work, please? Ah, no, it cannot. Ah, it's usual, you know. Here we go. 
this is how I can actually place the bloody thing. Alright, so this is the floor. This is the floor for the second floor. You know. Also, we need to use the zoop tool with R key over here so we can extend everything fast. So here we go, our second floor. And over here we have a lot of things to actually sort out. So first of all, let's think about our limestone over here. Will it work or not? Also, to be frank, I can just do something like this. Make some sort of indentation over there. Ah, no, this will look ugly. So probably we want to work with something like this. Here we go. Yeah, this would be fine. This will work. So yeah, this is like the connection point that I want to keep in mind for the limestone. And we have our constructors. So, constructors, constructors. And there is like an issue over here, so those constructors are not really aligned with the smelters. And this is kind of bad. Yeah. Not quite sure how I'll pull it off. But at the same time, we need to only to deal with eight constructors on this floor. I don't want to go higher, so this actually makes the things a bit easier than I anticipated previously. So probably if we are talking about the six constructors over there, I will be using something like this. And it will be all steel pipes, so I actually want to have like... Hmm, that's actually interesting. Actually, I can use way less um, in terms of power shards if I just do things a bit differently. So let's see. I can actually place the splitter like the, uh, it's not splitter, wait a second, this is merger, yes. I can place merger like that, 100%. Here we go. So this is like as close as I can get. So after this point, I can go actually not for 5 constructors, but I can go for a total of 8 constructors, which is, I think, overkill, because we need only <laughs> 6.5 so this is good news because I can remove one over here probably I'll be removing one even there but I'm not quite sure but here's the thing so I can actually make very flash connection over here yeah and I can make manifold over here uh, probably will remove that because this would be a bit clipping that I not enjoy hmm yeah, this can work, uh, and if this work, I can actually totally go for like two constructors uh, that are doing some weird things. So I'm still like figuring things out, as you can see over here. I'm definitely not quite sure how this blueprint can work. <laughs> oh man, this is like always like that, you know? But this is like fun. This is like small little puzzle to crack with the machinery in Satisfactory. So, if one intake like that, another intake, something like that, and we connect one over here, for here, and another over there, for example, uh, like this. Not ideal placement, but it can work. And over here we have some sort of like merger, oh man, this thing need, need to go even further, like this, and over here we have the, once again, the merger, you know, that probably will aim to this side, hmm, this will work, uh, the question is, will this work or not, actually it's in the middle, uh, wait, it's not in the way of this container, so it's great, also this container have like two connection points, so this is not a huge issue, uh, the issue that we can face is the connections over here. Do I go them from beneath? Do I do them from beneath or not? Not quite sure yet. Still need to connect those. So, how we'll deal with that? Uh, so, definitely I could not like do this 
like that. Do not do this like that. Oh man, this is like a puzzle. A puzzle that is not pleasant to solve. Oh boy. Uh, let me think how I can solve that. So I can go like this. But I could not really go like this, this, you know? Eh, this is an issue. Sort of an issue, because, you know, like, all those things, they can be pretty much solved by a bunch of conveyor lifts, you know? Like, this is uh, one of those tricks when you have no space and no, like, 90 degree U-turn. You can just go like this. And this will snap, you know? <laughs> Here you go! This is how you deal with those, like, tight corners. This is the trick. And yeah, we have like a perfect connection over here. This bunch of like conveyor lift holes. Also like, uh, yeah, I'm using Mark 3 and I'm producing what, like 30 over here. So this is like unnecessary. So I can upgrade all those things to Mark 1. And this will work. So here you go, the first connection for the first smelter. So this one is uh, iron plates. 30 ingots in 20 iron pl into 20 plates. Yeah, this will work. Next one would be overclocked one, and we need to bring our connection point over here. So let's do it over here. Also, I can do it from the top. If you think about it. Yeah, probably I will do it from the top. It's way better this way. So let's connect our connection over here with Mark 1 conveyor lift. Uh, then let's do... Mm, Probably something like this. Yeah. And in this fashion, I do not deal with anything over here, which is actually a huge deal because when I will start to connect my industrial storage container, I want this space as clean as possible. 100%. So, let's do this over here. Actually, I can make it a bit more flusher, but nah, not a big deal. And then we connect this like that. Hmm, look at that. And yeah, there's like small bits of the clipping over here, but usually I don't care. You know, like anything that visually can be modified when you can just use the hacksaw and just hacksaw the part of the machine, you know, I usually do not bother to make no clipping over there, you know, something like this. So yeah, we have like perfect connections for iron ingots and iron plates. Only thing over here, I need to overclock my iron plates with one power shard to 125%. Here we go. This is the ratios. All right, this is already starting to look not so bad. So first of all, um, wait a second, let's actually um, name this blueprint. So I think I will name it not the steel incubator because I will be dealing with uh, hemorrhoidal frames. And I'll have the steel incubator that will be dealing with uh, steel beams, concrete and encase beams. So this name is already in use to some extent. So yeah, let's go for the HMF incubator. Let's select my favorite color for the background. And actually, uh, let's select heavy module frames. Yeah, this is the name. Dig it. Here we go. So this is like the first step. All right. So over here, I'm thinking about one small trick that I can actually pull off over here. And this small trick is actually to do with uh, the intake over here. Uh, so obviously this is like aligned horizontally. So there is no like reason why I could not do everything over here on one level higher. And for that, actually, I will need to use a bit of tricks like that. So first I will go with a uh, conveyor lift over here. I will connect it over there. So this will snap. Yep. So this is my iron ingots. And then there is everything else. So yeah, this already looks better. Uh, so, 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 so let's actually use the normal wall over here like that. And then I'm actually taking the triple wall over here. And then I connect my uh, call over here. Yeah, this looks way more decent. 
Also, I have like a lot of space for the. Ah, uh, no, no actual switches over here because uh, I will be having connections over here from the foundation layer probably. So yeah, this is like empty space, but maybe all the signs would be over here, not there. Uh, we will see about that, but power switch over here, definitely. So uh, this is already better, already better. As you can see, there are a lot of like things that you can actually improve when you start to fiddle with your blueprints. And sometimes it's like the small things. So let's actually think about our, uh, you know, like steel pipes. So we have what? Total of four plus three, seven assemblers. So one of those assemblers can be like 50%. But only issue over here that uh, will actually this work uh, with a manifold. I'm not like, like comfortable by actually pushing like mergers inside of the container. Mm. Yeah, I'm not feel comfortable by making this. Yeah, this is like too much. Even though like a lot of people say that I'm using a lot of clipping. Like, yeah, I'm not using like hard clipping like that. This is too much for my liking. Although, although, we can actually use uh, other tricks to actually make it work. Yeah, definitely. Probably will use one trick over there. So let's actually make the manifold itself. Uh, because it's not as straightforward as you think. So how it will work, let's think like think, let's think. So the connection like this, connection like this, and the connection like this. As you can see over there, I'm using the Nash tool quite a lot with button H, because otherwise I could not like realign things from the top. Uh, then I need to go down below and align thing from below, then look how it's done from the top. Yeah, in update 7 without Nash tool, it was really painful, to be honest. Update 8 just rocks in terms of blueprint design, to be honest. But there are still, like, a lot of things that you can actually improve with the, with the blueprint designer. So, wait a second. First of all, uh, how much ironing, uh, steel ingots I'm producing? So, I'm producing quite a lot, yeah. This is definitely, like, Mark 3 belt. Like, 200 and stuff. So, Mark 3 lifts... 100% over here. So mark free lift over here, mark free, free lift over there and there, and the same goes over here. Like this. So this is connected. And now we can actually make the thing happen. What? Is it even in English language right now? I don't think so. <laughs> Alright, so uh, this is definitely like that. Ah, oh, man, this is not comfortable. Although, wait a second. If you think about this, is like um, the call over here. Uh, so it will actually fit over there. Come on. This is not like clipping. Although it's a bit of clipping. Alright. Uh, you know, like sometimes when you want to make things like really pretty, uh, you need to go like extra mile. Also, why this thing was there? So this is like what splitter. So I can actually. Uh, wait a second. Can I actually make the thing pretty or not? I'm not quite sure now. Wait a second. So is there any way that I can actually make this thing happen? Oh man. Yeah, sometimes it's painful. So it should be like this. And can I actually like snap the output from there. Ah, oh, come on. Reversed. Oh yeah, this snaps. All right, so this will work. Here we go. The same over here. Although, like, I don't really need even to... Uh, no, I need. Actually, actually, I need. So it would be splitter, splitter, like that. And then we go from down below. Uh, why do you not snip? Wrap. Ah, because I did not bring it all the way down into the thing. Merger, splitter like that. Let's take our conveyor lift. And yeah, as you can see, like straight away, it actually snips to the bloody thing. So here we go. Conveyor belt like that. And this means actually that I'm not talking English right now. I'm talking nonsense, but whatever. So we can do actually something like that. Here we go. Way more compact. Actually, well, this is a nice technique that I actually never employed. Well, 
This will work in the future, in some place. I don't know where, but it will definitely be handy. Alright, so now we have all those and we have autosave, which will totally wreck my game for like probably 20 seconds. So I need to talk about something. And that's something... Oh, whatever. Here we go. It was faster than I anticipated. So let's add extra lift over here. And we can actually wrap the whole thing like that through here. Uh, but I'm not a fan. 100% not a fan. Also, over here, man, this is like really close. Uh, I don't like this type of clipping. Crap. Mm, uh, this is so ugly. But this is like only one. Mm, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Arrgh, this is so painful. Painful, comrade. Also, uh, I can kind of... Yeah, probably I can find a way how to make this thing not angry. But definitely this is like the dead end, I think. So this is like... Three in line. So let's use splitters, the splitter number one, splitter number two, and splitter number three. Here we go. Then we are using mark three belts all the way. Like this. And this should actually snap ideally. No, it's not snapping ideally because of reasons. A lot of reasons. So this is like the annoying point about the blueprint design that you couldn't really like snap things together. Uh, so there are two ways. Uh, first way is like over here. You can do the same technique with the conveyor lift hole. Or we can do a bit different uh, way of doing things. A bit different way of doing things. What? Is it even like a sentence? <laughs> so we can actually do something in terms of... We can actually place our merger from... Well, different point. Uh, is this the point? I'm not quite sure yet. But sometimes you can go like this. So you basically place your merger like this. And yeah, as you can see, this will not work. So we need to actually place this conveyor lift over here. Then we are using like lift like this and nothing actually works wow wow so this will not actually not work uh -huh. sometimes it actually work uh, but this distance is just too much so we'll be doing things through the conveyor lift hole and for that i'm using vertical placement mode like that then let's see we need yeah, conveyor lift hole over here. Yep. This will work. And now we are using just conveyor lifts like that. Reverse the direction. Snap the bloody thing. Snap the bloody thing. Here we go. This is how you make the things very compact. Only issue that you are using sort of like one extra bit. You know, the trade-off. Also, I can actually split the bloody thing over here. So this will work for uh, this connection point. And then we can actually split the bloody thing over there. Oh yeah, this will work 100%. Yes! Uh, so... Do we make it like that? Probably. Uh, also, there is like small issue there. Ah, man. Sometimes it's painful. Ah, oh, man. The age of the designer. Eat. Um, so, I couldn't read it. Hmm, how I can actually solve that? Once again, I will be using this bloody technique, I guess. Yeah, I guess this is like the only way. Because this will not fit. Uh, the merger will not fit as well. Like, the easiest way is to just place splitter, and this way you make your... 90 degree angle, 
uh, you know, like 90 degree turn, but over here we just have no space and if we want to space, we want to move this thing one meter inward. It will still connect to the constructor, but then this will like, you know, do the hard clipping, which I sort of want to avoid, you know? Ah, man. So once again, we are doing this bloody technique, I guess. Okay. So I guess something like that. And then probably something like that. Or maybe that. Not quite sure yet. Also, this is too high. So we need to go a bit lower. Then we are using... Something like this. And after this point, we are just using you know, the normal thing. Quote-unquote normal. Also, man, this is like... as ugly as it can get. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, boy. Also, the other way is just to wrap the whole thing, like, around. Oh, actually, maybe this is, like, the way. Wait a second. Uh, so... Oh, uh, no, not really. It would be ugly. But this actually can totally work like this, yeah. Yep. So, only requirement over here is just to use your normal tools like this. Oh, actually it works, wow. And then we need to bring the whole thing uh, probably over there. Like that. Ah, why well, you do, do not snap? Come on. Is it too sharp for you? Uh, also, there's a small elevation change there. Uh, so, probably I will need to do this. Here we go. Uh, let's actually check out the whole thing. So, this is... Oh, yeah. It's like roller coaster for... No reason. Um, If you think about that, we can actually do it even a bit more smoother. Like that. Here we go. Yep, this will work in my book. And then there is this. Perfect. Uh, also, the question is, can we just make it even more perfect? Uh, almost there. So, I think I can go even... Ah, come on. Not like this. Let's try this this way. And also, if we like paint this thing like black, nobody will even notice. Mmm. Also, I think there's like even inter more interesting way of doing things over here. So we can actually make this like that. Yes. This can work. Yep. This can work. And then I don't need anything. I just do it like this. Here we go. Oh boy, this is so ugly. <laughs> but it works, and there is like no clipping, you know, you know, like hard clipping. There is still a lot of like soft clipping, which as well, the whole idea about update 5, I think, if I remember correctly. So, uh, not this way, the other way. Here we go. So we can just uh, align things like that. So, this would be a splitter into the splitter. Here you go. Uh, this is definitely a bizarre manifold, which is not really even a manifold at this point. Uh, but this will work, so we are feeding directly a total of seven constructors. And one of those constructors would be uh, steel pipes at only 50%. Can you imagine that? So, we are all just not using any overclocking over here. And this way we are producing, we are totally covered our iron ingots, our steel ingots, our iron plates, our, oh, wait a second. Oh boy, I totally forgot about my steel screws and steel beams. How could I actually forgot about those? <laughs> oh boy. All right, so change of plans. Ah, 
Ooh, wait a second, this is only six. So we actually need to overclock one of those. Still like that. But, but, wait a second. We still have space for two constructors. So this is not an issue yet. I'm still vibing, I'm still vibing. So wait a second. Uh, over here, we need to deal with the steel, um, uh, where is those? Steel beams into steel screws. So there is only one connection for the steel ingots. Uh, this is totally doable. This is totally doable, doable, doable. Um, blah, 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 blah. What? Uh, so I can, can actually be smart about that. So I can either do it over here or I can actually do it over there. Okay. So this will actually work. Yep. Uh, this is sort of like fine in my book. Yep. And also why I'm using Conveyor Leaf Mark 4. Mark 3 will be more than enough. Uh, and then after this point I'm doing like two constructors. Uh, and two constructors basically can be uh, quite far away. So I can totally chill with the conveyor lifts over there. Do something like this. Yep. This works. So this is like steel beam constructor. And this steel beam constructor would be producing something small, uh, which is what? 2.5 steel beams? Wow. Yeah, 2.5 would be the maximum that this thing should produce. Uh, obviously at some point it will be fully stuffed with the things. And then we are doing something like this, and once again this is only 2.5, so there is no need for Mark 3 belt, so let's upgrade this to Mark 1. And over here we will have our steel screws, which would be basically what? 125 like that or we can go just for 50% which would be self-regulating to some extent so yeah sometimes I go a bit higher than necessary and in this fashion uh, well in manifold design it will still work eventually maybe it will be not efficient for like several hours but in the end of the day it will be 100% efficient uh, and in this fashion I kind of sort of like decrease the wind up time uh, you know like bunch of wood magic and stuff <laughs> all right so man this is like a lot of constructors just look at that so now we need to merge all our steel pipes then we need to deal with our limestone so this is the merger for the iron plates, which will be working with Mark 1 belts over there. There we go. Probably will be using, yeah, this output. And if I'm not storing like iron plates, so I do not need like smart splitter, although I need smart splitter for the constructors. So I think there will be smart splitter over here for the constructors. Yeah, definitely. So this thing will go this way. Also, my phone had something. Huh. Whatever. Okay. 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 This starts to look uh, like something that actually can work. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. The surprising thing that a lot of people actually requested the video where I will be making the whole blueprint, like from the get-go without any editing. And as you can see, this takes a lot of time and I already have like a lot of like prior knowledge how work, uh, how the things works. And before that, well, I think I already spent like one hour uh, for this blueprint. And before that, to get to this stage, it was like, I don't know, like maybe two or three hours. So yeah, there is a lot of like prior knowledge already. Right, so I think to actually understand how, will I I, how I will proceed further, I need to make the third floor. Because before I have my assemblers in place, I'm sort of kind of not sure how I, will, how I will deal with the, well, steel pipes at least. Alright, so we have several things to tackle with the third floor. And first of all, like, it's like assemblers and constructors for the limestone, for the concrete. 
Uh, so let's bring up the wall. And uh, the way I'm doing this blueprint is that I have actually not exactly 12 meter floor. Uh, not uh, floor. It's more of like 10 meter floor because I have one meter from here gone, and there is one more meter from the top that will be gone. Uh, something like this, you know. So this is the way how this blueprint will work. Yep, here we go. Can delete this for now because, well, there is no reason to have everything in place for now. So this is like the third floor, the actual floor, you know, the concrete. Now you can use actually the asphalt, but I actually prefer to use concrete because it's a bit lighter. I'm only using asphalt where I actually need the asphalt color for the exterior and stuff, you know. So, I think there is like one thing that is sort of like in the way. And this thing is this constructor. So, this constructor should go a bit further back. Because if this constructor will go a bit further back... Uh, first of all, uh, will it actually... No, it's not in the way of there. Uh, then we have uh, this... I don't want to have this thing flush. Do not really want to do that. Uh, so, this means that I actually want to have... Uh, some sort of contraption over here. So this is flush, and this is how I actually want the whole thing. Oh man, come on, don't do this for me. Why there is like no half steps vertically over here? Oh, come on. Oh, uh, wait a second. Can I, can I do it from the top? Uh, I think this is... No, not the exact thing. So, ah! Uh, how I'm... Uh, what? How I even do this thing? Like, wait a second. So, do I need, like, to do this, like, this way? Here we go. Then I do this. Okay, this will work. Yeah, sometimes we need a lot of, like, extra notch tools to actually make everything happen. Let's paste the old settings over here. Here we go. Uh, then this merge probably will be as it was before. But in this final... Blah, 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 blah. Wow, my English. Alright. So, in this fashion, what we have achieved... Uh, wait a second. So, this actually can be misplaced a bit. So, let's do it again. Here we go. So, this way it will work. Alright. Uh, Alright, so, here's the thing. So, right now we have a lot of, like, empty space over here for the conveyor lift holes. So, all the items from the top, they can go over here, and we have no constructor in... Well, in the way. So this is why I actually done the whole thing over here. So there is that. Alright, so... As you can see over here we have what, like... 10 constructors? Yeah. Totally chill amount of constructors, to be fair. You can place up to like 14. Oh, not 14, 12, sorry. Hmm. Actually got myself a T. Of all things, T is the thing that I usually do not drink. <laughs> but yeah, these days we have this weird weather where, well, ah, it's constantly snowing. And I think it's like changing for the like huge like negative temperatures, like minus 20 and stuff. So yeah, my head not hurts, but you know, it's like uh, stupid all the day. <laughs> Alright, so now we need to deal with assemblers. Here's the thing. So this is not straightforward as you think. We have 2.5 assemblers here, 2.5 here, one here, and we can overclock this to only three assemblers, you know, like these three things. And then we can just place four constructors. Man, four constructors. But what we can actually do instead? We can actually overclock constructors and just place like five assemblers. This interior can work. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. So let's actually try to eyeball the thing. So let's bring this thing to the edge. Uh, this thing over there. And this thing over there. Maybe I will even move it to the edge as well. I don't know yet. Because of the constructors over here. So let's see. So this is... Uh, 
how it will look if we will be doing, you know, the five assemblers. But here's a like small issue. We need to place like two constructors. And they actually fit. Huh. So then we will need to deal the manifold over here. Not the manifold, yeah, the manifold. Uh the small manifold. At that. Hmm. That actually can work way better. Uh because this is like only two overclocked constructors instead of like two fully overclocked assemblers. This is the same amount of power shards, but instead we are using less power. But wait a second, this is the same amount of power shards? No, not really. Because I made in only two assemblers, and I still need to overclock each of those two assemblers to extra 50%. Huh. So actually this way I'll be using two extra power shards, but at the same time I'll be saving myself like something about like 40 megawatts of power this fashion. Yeah, this is probably like totally worth it. Maybe even more power, probably even more. I'm just eyeballing things in my mind. So if we go with assemblers like this... Also there are some assemblers that fit other assemblers I think, or not, I don't remember. Yeah, this is all the better. Could not even remember things. Alright, uh, let's do it. Uh, not constructor, let's do assembler. So in this fashion we have quite a lot of space for the constructors and for all the merging. Uh, next question is, uh, so we are dealing with the steel pipes. Uh, we are dealing with encased beams. Uh, this is like 100% thing. So two of those. So this can actually feed like directly into there. From here. This would be neat. Then there are steel pipes. Uh, steel pipes, steel pipes, steel pipes. And there is only one assembler for... Well, you know. Our... Reinforced iron plates. And probably this would be like this one. I bet. <laughs> yeah, probably. Reinforced iron plates. And over there we will have uh, steel pipes. Uh, steel frames, sorry, steel pipes. Steel pipes are the part of the steel frames. Here we go. So this is like a rough idea right now. We definitely need to work out the belts. So this thing will be like what? 100%, 150, and this one would be 150. So this is the rough idea how the things should work, you know? And this thing is only like 50%. Uh, those two are actually making the concrete, and this concrete would be all the way, like, through the roof. Uh, obviously, like, 70% is basically we need to minus 20 over here. But I think... Well, we have no limitation on limestone, so if you actually input more limestone, it will totally work. So yeah, it's like extra 2.5 concrete or something. Not a lot, but still, you know. Ah, uh, even more. Wait a second. What is the difference over here? So it's 20, it's doing like, what, uh, 4.5? Yeah, 4.5 concrete. Here we go, yeah, ideal 5 constructors, which is basically 2 constructors to 250%. So this is the concrete situation. Uh, yeah, concrete situation uh, need to be dealt with by using, you know, like manifolds. Uh, also, 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 how it will look on this end. Not pretty. So I'm thinking about actually moving this assembler, or not the assembler, the constructor, like that. And in this fashion, everything will work a bit better. You know, like in terms of like mergers over here, it will be a bit prettier. Let's copy that, paste that. Let's delete that. Replace that. Place the floor hole. And place the settings over there. So 
So there are like... Also, we need to make the smart splitter in some place. Uh, it will be there or here. Man, this is... This is not ideal. Uh, also, what is the production ratio? Is like 37 concrete per minute. So over here I can use Mark 1, but from there I will need to use Mark 3. And sort of like I can just, yeah, wrap it around into like splitter. So splitter over here. And this should be like smart splitter. Yeah, wait a second. So, so we can totally do like smart splitter over here. Here we go. So... We have mark free, mark free, we have mark free, and then we do the like the hole over here. And this is like overflow. So this is like concrete. This is overflow, and this is concrete. Oh man, this is beautiful. Well, until the point where I actually look beneath. <laughs> but for now it's beautiful. So what is beneath? Yeah, beneath we have enough space to actually make the thing work. Yeah. Oh yeah, this will work. Right, so this is connection. All right, so we need to actually connect steel pipes now, and steel pipes probably will be from beneath, or not. Oh, this can be ugly. I don't know. Uh, we will see. We will see. No steel pipes over here. Only iron plates and screws. Okay, where is our iron plates, by the way? Iron plates are over there, and connection is over there. Hmm, yeah, we can totally work with something like this to connect iron plates over there. So first of all, uh, let's deal with the concrete. So this is mark free, this is mark free. This should be in line. Uh, is it like splitter? Yeah, it's splitter and splitter. Then we have mark free belt over here. That totally snaps over there. And here we go. Here we have our concrete connection. Do we need concrete anywhere else? I think we need concrete anywhere else. Oh shit, we need concrete for heavy encased frames. Oh man, this is not convenient. Like at all. So this uh, connection point actually goes way of the dodo, but still. We sort of need to sort out the thing with a, you know, like, heavy model frames. And here's the thing. I think we have enough space over here. So there is no issue. We just do the splitter. Only question is, do we do, like, smart splitter? Like, double smart splitter is kind of a thing over here, maybe? I don't know. Let's see the ratios. So, we will be de uh, dividing our concrete production into two parts. And those parts should not be equal. So, this is like 60, this is like 20. And yeah, this is not dividing equal. So, this is like bad way of doing things. Although, like, this will actually overflow from here into there. Mm, do I want to deal with that? So this would be like splitter to the top from here, you know, to the heavy module frame assembler, uh, manufacturer, and this would be still our overflow. Mm, do I go all the way manifold or I still doing like smart splitter? Mm, we'll see, we'll see. It's not really important. But what is important is to make... Oh man, this is... I hope this was connected properly. Yes. Alright. Here we go. Two connections for concrete. This would be connection for... So how many plays we are doing over here? This is 25, this is 20. So this is under 60. We can do the Mark 1 belts. Here we go, Mark 1 belt over here. Uh, let's make it like this, so I have no issue with my windows, no clipping. And then it will go over there, probably like that. To my assembler over there, over there, over there. 
Maybe something like this, maybe something like there. I'm not quite yet sure. Uh, this will... Oh! Is it like... Ah... Uh, a bit of center. <laughs> sometimes, you know, like, you, you want to see those, you know, like, perfect angles like this. But sometimes it just doesn't work this way. Whatever. Ah! But whatever, first we need to sort our screws, and screws are over here. And this actually means that I need to connect screws somewhere there. And this can be an issue, because I still need to sort out my steel pipes. So, steel pipes, steel pipes. Uh, wait a second. Reinforced iron plates. Hmm. First of all. Uh, bolted plates. Why I'm not doing bolted plates over here? Here we go. This is the actual thing. Uh, it will be connecting to the modular frames, which are still frames over here. Uh, so I can actually make the overflow from there to here and somewhere there. And you connect steel pipes here and there, which is two opposite sides. And I need to connect steel pipes to my uh, heavy encased frames. So quite a lot of connections, to be fair. So yeah, probably this merger will actually aim. Over here, at least it looks this way. Although if it will look that way, we can make the smart splitter over there. Uh, which is just above the containers, which will not work. So I cannot like split it underground over there. <laughs> yeah, this will not work. Uh, Alright, so we will be splitting it elsewhere. So let's place mergers. Merger number two, merger number three. Uh, what is production ratios? It's like 20, 20, 20, 20, and there is one. Uh, there is one at 30, yeah, over there. So this is like Mark 1 belts there, there, over here, there, there. And now we are doing the Mark 3 belts. I'm skipping Mark 2 because, well, reinforced iron plates is uh, a bit more annoying to deal with than with the steel beams, because steel beams is way easier to make than reinforced iron plates. Yeah, counterintuitive, Mark 3 belt is easier to use than, well, Mark 2 belts. At least in my book, I don't know. Everybody have different opinion about that, probably. Um, yeah, all right. So over here, I will be doing something like this. And over there, probably something like that. One more time. Here we go. Also, I should not even, like, make it so close, but over there. So, we place Mark 3 there. Mark, uh, not there. Mark 3 over here. Then we make the same over here for those two assemblers. Here we go. And now we need to make the connections. And the question is... So what is that? I already forgot about that. Oh, this is the concrete. Mm -hmm. So this no goes any doesn't go anywhere. So we need to make the splitter... Uh, can I make it there? Probably. Obviously, I will need to use this bloody technique that I'm not personally enjoying. But at the same time, maybe I will do it differently. Hmm. So right now it will be like huge belt all, all all across. And we have this connection over there. Not quite the pen. We can kind of do the thing over here. And if we do it this way, we can bring the uh, iron plates over there. Yeah, a lot of, like, uh, fiddling around with the connection points and the blueprint. This is, like, the whole 
bad part about the blueprints that sometimes you just like spend so much time figuring out all those like conveyor connections over there, over here, over there, once again over there. Uh, it starts to be annoying at some point, but you know, this is just the nature of the beast. So. But if you do like this, uh, this will also work. Alright, let's do it different way. Let's make it through the splitter. So we do splitter over here. We connect steel pipes here. Uh, then we uh, probably I will go with something really flush because, well, I don't want my windows to have some clipping. Uh, then we do something like this and we connect the whole thing to there. And obviously the whole thing doesn't snap because it's just too far. Uh, to avoid that we can actually use the conveyor lifts, ceiling mounts, like this. Uh, where is this? Here we go. Reverse the direction and now just connect two points over there. Here we go. So this is the first connection. Then we need to bring it all the way over there to the second connection. How do I do that? Well, if I have nothing here, then I can just do it from the top, which will totally work. Only issue is, uh, well, it will not actually work. Ah, oh, crap. Uh, so, to make this thing work, we need the splitter. But then, how do you connect things to the splitter, you know? So, I'm sort of like brain farting over here. Hmm. Let me think. So, we have the splitter over here. That splits over here. And we have overflow here. But if we make the smart splitter, we can do things a bit differently. So first of all, let's actually aim the screws and plates there. And if we do, for example, output over there. Oh man, this is like a lot of things too close together. But it can totally work. So we, if we exchange this smart splitter, so here we have not Kiterium. Concrete, come on. Here we have concrete. Uh there we have con concrete so this concrete goes to heavy module frames and this concrete will go to overflow. Okay, and over here we just upgrade this to the normal splitter. Here we go, and then we remove that. And this way we have like no issue by connecting things from below. But once again, man, this is like a lot of things down there. Oh boy. Oh boy. But at the same time, we sort of can do things a bit sneakily over there. So for example, we can just use clipping like this. Ah, uh, not a fan. Absolutely not a fan. Man, I think like the whole shenanigans over there is just overrated. But whatever. We can use it from down below then. Oh, this will be so messy. <laughs> Alright. So, do you see all these connections there? This is complete mess. But I think we can actually figure it out. Regardless. So this will still look like that. This uh, can still be done through the top. Alright. This kind of sorts things out. Yeah. Okay, uh, is there any reason why I'm doing the things this way? Yeah, because I have no angle over here. This is why this actually makes sense. Alright, this will do. 
Then we need to connect screws over here, and this is output for the container. Okay. Where is the screws? Screws are over there. So I can totally, 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 totally uh, do mark free bell because it's 115 screws, as I remember. I can do this. And I can do it like this. And this is sort of like brings it to another axis. Which is nice. Once again, mark free belts because it's like 115 and stuff. Also, let's make things into the proper direction. Like that. And I think, yeah, this will do at this angle. Yeah, 100%. And then this is the connection for screws. Ah, uh, come on, snap. Snap. Here we go, the snapping point. Uh, so we connected our screws. We are not planning to actually separate screws from the main chain because I already have the screw, personal storage. I don't care about screws and I don't have the containers for screws, frankly. So there's that. Mm. Man, this is close. Uh, so this is the output for, I think, concrete. Is it concrete? Yeah, this is the concrete. Over there. So this is output for concrete. Is there any decent way of dealing with this concrete right now? Hmm, I think yes. So what we can actually do over here, we can do output like this, or maybe even like this. And this is sort of like brings the concrete to another access, you know? And the only question over here, so either I do the conveyor lift call over here and connect to one of the conveyor, not conveyor, the industrial storage containers there, or I do the conveyor lift call over there somewhere and they connect it on the other side. So this would be dependent on other items in the blueprint. So there is that. All right, so we kind of sort of dealt with those two holes over there. Now we need to make the connection point over here for our pipes and stuff. So this is connection one and here we will have, uh, we will have or not we will have. Let me think. So there is also like one notion about where do I put my smart splitter. I can put it over here. Totally. But then I have no space over here to actually connect to the storage containers. Which is not ideal, but whatever, let's do the thing. So this is the splitter. Also, I think uh, I need to split it from here. This will be a bit easier. Like that. Here we go. Then we connect it to here. So this is the connection. And now we need to bring the whole thing from there. To here. Oh, there's some things in the way, like over here. You know, here we go. And this is like direct connection. Mm, perfecto. Here we go. Uh, so, this is the connection for, you know, steel pipes. But we want to have smart splitters. And also, wait a second, this is like no, not the final final destination for the steel pipes because I still want to bring my steel pipes to heavy module frames. So this is like the extra splitter over there. So here we go. This will go to the roof, to the heavy module frame manufacturer. Yeah, here we go. So then, then I'm placing smart splitter over there, 100%. This is like the perfect place then. Here we go, here's the smart splitter for the steel pipes. This is connection, so steel pipe at front and probably at right overflow, maybe at left. Yeah, probably at right. Uh, where would be the hole? Uh, I can place the hole somewhere here, I guess. Is it flush? No. So yeah, this should be in line or maybe even there. So will it work over here down below? Ah, uh, it's not ideal because we have this belt over here. 
And if we place it over here, it will probably it will be in conflict with one of the buildings. Yeah. So this is like better place for the steel pipes. All right. Is it in one line once again? Yes, it's one line. Here we go. This is overflow for my steel pipes. So this is like the first item that I will be connecting probably. And this means that probably I will do something among half step lines like this. Is it half step line? So I can actually do something similar to this, you know? Uh, so this is not exactly the half step. Let's make it half step. I think this is... No! Why? Why I am so bad at this right now? So this is the actual straight angle. Um, I think steel pipes will sort of like clip through this thing a bit. But man, you know, like 10 bloody centimeters. Also, am I like flush with the uh, input of this container? Uh, not exactly, but kind of close. Uh, so I think I actually will bring it all the way up to here. Where is this uh, logistic thing? So over here. Uh, so this should work like that. Here we go. And this... Ah, come on. Here we go. Works like this. So this container is my steel pipes. Here we go. Uh, is this like second container? Yep. Second container is the steel pipes. So here's the trick with the containers and the signs. So I'm using uh, the painting beams on the edge. I place them like this, then I take my... Where is the science? I think this is one meter sign. Yeah, as you can see, this is not fit because it's on the edge, but if we use the notch tool, place it with button H, and when then we can move it in full steps with arrow keys. That doesn't work, so we need to hold once again control button and move it in the half steps like that. So here we go, the first sign. Then we do the second sign like that. And this is basically our steel pipes. Uh, so let's select the proper colors. Select this, uh, select the steel pipes. Here we go. Let's copy that and paste it over there. So this is our first sign. And then actually let's place the name, uh, which would be... Wait a second, let's select this layout. Select colors like that. And this is... Ah, come on. Steel pipes. Here we go. Not bad. So this is the third I uh, first item. Alright, alright, alright. So we have still a lot of things to do. We still need to make the connection for reinforced iron plates over here. And we still need to make connection for iron plates over there. Uh, so iron plates, iron plates, iron plates. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, so, 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 once again, we are using Mark 1 lift over here. Mm, I'm not quite sure about that, but we'll see. Do I do this way? Eh, probably, yes. Only thing that I actually want to do here, so I, I prefer to make uh, the belts, you know, a bit curvy. So, what I do usually for places like that. So this is one, this is two, this is three. Oh no, this is three. So I go this way. This actually should be exact. Ah, once again, the bizarre hate. So this will not work. Ah, whatever, whatever, whatever. If this doesn't work, we can always do something even more interesting. Like this. And this way, yeah, this would be like whoop whoop. That sort of like look interesting. Way better than this like you know angle shape that is not like a 90 degree. 
So here we go, this is iron plates, and now we have the production of reinforced iron plates. And from this point, well, we need to connect uh, this to our module of frames. And this is like an interesting puzzle over here. I think I will be doing it from the beneath, so I will do this. And probably this. Yep. And this should work. So, uh, first of all, this would be the conveyor lift mark 1. Also, I kind of sort of messed up my connections over here. So, let's do the this connection first, then this, then this, then this. And over here, we'll have mark 1 belt. Um, da -da 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 -da. Probably I can do the splitter over there. So, over here, I can totally do the smart splitter. Uh, if I want, I'm not quite sure yet. Maybe I'll be doing it over here. Not quite sure. So we'll see. Uh, so over here, I need a splitter, which is a normal splitter. Oh man, this is actually a bit of creeping over there. Kind of unfortunate. Uh, I could uh, like move the whole thing one step over here, and it will work. And nobody actually will see it. Yeah, whatever. In any case, we can do things flush. So I don't really care that there is a bit of clipping over here. You know, sometimes you, you could not do everything perfect. And sometimes actually making something perfect will require you spending like 15 minutes to actually reassemble the whole thing. And then you're like sitting there, well, nobody even notices it over there. So yeah, why not? So, there are some things like that. So, this is the connection for reinforced iron plates, and we need to have the split for our storage containers somewhere there. Probably this would be like the last item that I will be doing. Uh, and when it is the last item, I need to work with the last container. So, let's, sit, let's leave this thing for the last call, you know. Alright, so module frames and encased industrial beams. They should sort of like merge and then go to the top, to the roof with the manufacturer. And there should be like smart splitters as well. So this is not straightforward right now. I have no idea how it will work. So first of all, let's make the roof. So the roof would be a, once again indented one step one meter into the, you know, our blueprint factory. Also, I think uh, it would be something among the lines like this. Not quite sure yet. So here's the thing. Manufacturer. Manufacturer is like this machine that's sort of like using two spaces. Sort of. It's actually using a bit more. So as you can see over here, so the whole idea would be like just to make uh, those conveyor lift holes. You know. Just flush with the manufacturer. Like this. And then... When everything is done, you just place the blueprint. And you place the manufacturer on top of the blueprint and just connect the conveyor lift holes. That's it. So you do not need to have like double blueprint, you do not need to have any exploits. You just place one manufacturer and four conveyor lifts, five conveyor lifts. So this is the whole idea behind adding manufacturer on top. But this I need, but for this I need sort of like a very precise way of doing things. And for that, uh, let's actually see how it will work. So, I'm thinking about something like that right now. So, this is the initial idea. And, if you take manufacturer, as you can see, it's like, sort of like, almost perfect. Not perfect. But, you know, close enough. So, this is like, on the edges. Yeah. Yeah. This looks decent. And if I will have, like, you know, like, a very lift holes like that, this will totally work. Uh, only question is uh, this conveyor lift hole. I could not really place it over there, so I need to place it over here. It will still work as well. Will it? 
Uh, yes, it's connect. Uh, but ideally, I want to bring it, you know, flush. And if you want to bring it flush, I will need to make one more meter over there. Ah, uh, this will this will work. This will work definitely. Uh, is this flush? Yeah, sort of. Like the manufacturer is like weird machine where they have, uh, you know, those outputs like in the half steps, which is totally bizarre. But yeah, this should work. And if it works, then it looks like this. So I am putting those things over there. Uh, then I'm putting like 100% normal foundations there. Like this. And then I sort of like if I'm thinking about, you know, like those half steps like there, I'm doing this. And then I will need to do, man, this is like a lot of extra concrete, but you know, for like beautiful things, you sometimes need to use a bit more concrete. So this is like the whole thing behind manufacturer over here. Also, I will need to move this. I don't know, do I need those like things over there? Probably not. This is like extra concrete that I don't really need to use. What I actually can do is just to paint it black, like that, and this will work, you know. Here we go. Only issue with this design that I will have no, like, glass roof on the top, but this is fine. And so, I do the conveyor lift holes. They are basically one meter into the whole thing. Like this, like this. Like this and this. So this is our intakes for manufacturer and look at that. Yeah, there is like no issues with that. So I definitely have all the space in the world to actually make the thing happen. But over here we can see the issue with the whole thing. Man, it's actually see-through. Oh man, this is like disappointing. But probably I will do it a bit differently, so probably I will do it from the inside. So I don't need to do it from there. I will need to do it from here, and I will need to do it from here, and then probably I'll need to align the things like here. Here we go. All right. And there is still the gap there, man. There's no gap there, at least. Surprisingly. Huh, that's kind of interesting. Why there is no gap there? Is it because I'm using like half foundation uh, things there? That's sort of interesting. Uh, do I want to deal with this foundation gap? Yeah, probably. This small, like... Yeah, this will drive me insane, probably. Also, there will be light that will be bleeding probably through this hole. So I think this is justified to actually make things flush over there. Here we go. So this is uh, the podium for the manufacturer. I only need to actually add another conveyor lift hole over here for the output of manufacturer. And then I need to actually add the power chain. So this is also the thing. Here we go. Also do it like this. All right, all right. So this is already starting to look as the proper thing, the proper plate for the manufacturer. And yeah, the walls I will add later. Uh, the question right now is where our power connection is over there. And how far away it is into the whole thing. So this is like four meters in if we count the indentation. And 4 meters in is exactly over there. So this is the place where we will have the power. Uh, can I have the power through? No, not. Can I have power like that? Yes, I can. So this is roughly the place where we will just connect the manufacturer, you know. This is the place where we will be bringing the power. Also, speaking of power, probably I'll be connecting it like this, through the floor. 
It just makes sense to an extent. Is it like in line? Yes, it's in line. Another alternative is to put it over there. Maybe. I don't know yet. Let's try it like here. And obviously we have this half steps with the notch tool. Alright, so this can work like this. Okay. This is neat connection. And I'll connect it from here. This will do. The power chain. Yeah, deal with that later. Right now I want to deal with all the intakes for the manufacturer and with all the smart splitters from the assemblers. Because yeah, it's really important. Okay. Okay. And on the second thought, right now I'm like sitting over here and thinking like, why the hell I even have this podium? Because like, lower is the manufacturer, it is better. So it sort of like doesn't make any, even any sense, to be fair. So I totally like remove that. This is like a lot of like extra materials that doesn't achieve anything and actually bring the manufacturer higher, which is definitely not the thing that I want to do. Uh, so yeah, we delete all this shenanigans over there. Uh, then we will still remain... We'll still keep the power connection over here. Yeah. But we'll do it a bit smarter. So in this case, in this case... We are doing just flush things like that. And then we are doing interesting thing over here. So let's do something like this. This looks like sort of like interesting, you know? Um, yeah. And this is basically, you know, like your outline for the manufacturer you know sort of let's see how it actually works uh so let's actually search for our blueprint uh where is it oh here we go it's over here so if we take uh the manufacturer and actually plop it on top of the blueprint ah uh, this is like painful all right so this is this is not the perfect outline to say the least because it doesn't allow you to place the thing perfectly. And if it remains in place, it sort of like clips through the whole machinery. So we need to bring this uh, thing a bit like one meter further, or like half step further, you know? Then it will be outlined on the manufacturer. Mm, yeah. And do I even need this thing? Like, to be fair, let's just remove the thing. Uh, can I go for the default mode? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I do not need this outline. Yeah, I will be removing this outline. There's no purpose there. Uh, actually, I can do the, you know, like the pattern outline. That will work. Let's see. And considering, you know, the power connection. So if I remove that. I don't think that this is sort of like defeats any purpose. Yeah, this this looks fine to me. So this will work. So I do remove this outline. And then I can use, uh, you know, those patterns, which is over here. Only issue with the patterns, I think we'll need to use the color cartridges. And this is sort of can be annoying. So let's try to do it. Do I need to use color cartridges? Yes, I do. Yeah, I don't want to use the color cartridges in my blueprint. Like, it's a nice idea to outline the outline of the manufacturer, but it just serves no purpose. It's pretty straightforward just to put the manufacturer over here, you know? Everything will align. The power connection, the conveyor lift holes, yeah. So this is the manufacturer idea. Okay, okay. So we are slowly getting there, but we still need to make a lot of connections. So over here we have, well, a lot of things going on. So first of all, we need to connect steel frames to input of our beautiful heavy model frame assembler. Manufacturer, man, yeah. 
assembler, manufacturer, they are all the same sometimes. <laughs> right, so this would be probably the first one. And oh boy, this is the first issue, I guess. This is sort of like a setback. Oh boy. Are you serious? My game. Wow, this is like brutal. So I need to have enough clearance over here, I guess. To actually for this thing to work. Which is ridiculously bad if you think about it. Wow. Oh boy, so I need to exploit stuff. I guess. Oh boy, this is like bad. Man, I didn't really want it to use exploits. So let's try it once more time. And let's see, will it work in a different manner? Right, so if we bring the whole thing down like this, will it work or not? Yes, it actually works. So it should be like two steps down. Man, this is not ideal. But at the same time, this is like something that I can live with. Can I? Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Man, this is the find. Alright. The find indeed. So, how will deal with all that? So, probably this should be like huge indentation then. And this should be like fine, like this, yeah. This will do. Although I'm kind of curious how I'll be putting the whole thing down. That's sort of like interesting part then. Uh, but whatever. So I guess this should be something like this. And after this, I will be doing something like this. I guess. Yeah. This is sort of like a setback that sometimes you get with the blueprints. But whatever. Alright. So this looks decent. This looks decent. Mm, we can actually delete those. And let's deal with the rest. So. First thing first. I want to try to do it like in three plates. Yeah, definitely works. Um, although there are like those gaps over there. That. Yeah, definitely over there. So I actually want to indent this one meter like that. And then just do, yeah, this way it have the flush everything. Then I do something like this. Okay, this looks not bad. Also, maybe I will need to move it just one bit there if I want to have this. Because, uh, wait a second. So, output would be something like this. I could not really replace it like that. Mm hmm So there's two more there. And then we have all the paint in the world all around. And this looks like the indentation for well manufacturer. And once again I have those gaps there. Not ideal. But well we can deal with that. But the issue, the issue here is that well, first of all, let's double check. Will it work? Yes, it will work. Why it work? Because, well, I can almost put the thing over there. Huh. That's kind of interesting that I can actually place the bloody thing, but could not, like, actually confirm it. That's sort of, like, interesting. Uh, but whatever. Uh, so also, is this in the way of any machinery? No, actually not. This will be not in the way. So it's completely legit connection over there. So I do something like this, and then I do... Uh, well, this is a lot of steel frames, so I can do it with a Mark III belt. 
Oh, here we go. This is like the first connection for our heavy model frames. Hmm. Uh, let's use the paint everywhere, just in case. And let's see how this thing stacks up with the actual manufacturer. So, HMF, HMF, incubulator, here we go. This is our blueprint. And let's take our manufacturer. So, here's the issue. If you try to place it exactly how you want, it will probably not allow you to place it exactly how you want. Yes? No? Man, this is like a pain in one place. So if you want to indent it down... Man, this blueprint. This blueprint! And there is like, like no vertical notch in Vanilla Satisfactory, which is annoying as heck. So, if you want to make it flush with everything, also, like, there is a question, can you actually make it flush? So, yes, you can. This is like, not like an issue, so there is no machinery that will deny you this possibility. The main issue is with the indentation. And double stacking those, well, this is not ideal, but probably this is what I will need to do. Mm, yeah, double stacking the entities. Indeed. And yeah, there is no issue with connecting those. Although, like, actually this is, like, better. Because then, when you will be just running around, you will never see the manufacturer on top. Which is sort of like an advantage to an extent. Alright, so what I actually need to do this, uh, here. So, I need to make it... Bigger! So, let's first do the edge. Like that. Uh, then I need to work with the whole thing there, there. Uh, I think there is fine. Although not really fine because I need to probably to do, do something like this. Yeah. Here we go. Then do something like this. And from there we can work in steps. So we can work with something like this. Here you go. And then we will do something like this. This should work. Not 100% that it will work, but it should work. Let's see. And also, now we need to deal with the whole thing over there. So let's do it like that. With no gaps, then we do this half foundation, and then we do the full foundation. Here we go. So this should be enough of space. Let's save this blueprint and try it out. Let's remove that. And of course manufacturer. Here we go. HMF encabulator. Na -na 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 -na. Okay, so yeah. This already fits exactly how I want. And yeah, there is even some wiggle room there. Here we go. So this is the thing. Yep, 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 yep. Nice. This looks like an actual thing. Obviously it would be painted black because yeah, why not? Um, <laughs> and we have enough clearance there. Actually, I'm kind of surprised that I was thinking about that, well, I should bring my assemblers higher, but for some reason I actually started to bring in them one meter lower than I can. But now I'm kind of happy because I have this extra headroom, so nothing actually clips. Huh, that's kind of nice. So yeah, now we need to connect all the things. Okay, 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 we connected our... Uh, steel pipes, we already have steel pipe overflow. Now we need to connect our uh, concrete. Where is the concrete? Uh, concrete is over there. So over here we have overflow to the right, and over here we have our actual output for heavy module frames. 
And we can totally do it quite close to here. Ah, come on. Here we go. So. Uh, it's a bit too close for my comfort. But we can do something interesting. So let's try to do this something interesting. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Oh man, this doesn't work like that. Like, I wish if you could actually uh, place the mergers and stuff on the ceiling. That kind of would make a lot of things easier. But not this time around. Uh, so the other way of doing this, uh, I don't just don't want to place a lot of like foundations right now. I probably will do it, yeah, like something like this. Where I'll have this merger or splitter or whatever. Uh, to here, and then I do another one to here and just merge it. Because why not, you know? And here we go. Yeah, a bit of extra materials, but honestly, I could not bother aligning things together right now. Yeah, sometimes it's just make something that actually works and that's it. Okay, so this works. Uh, then, then, we need to do something with power. So once again, we probably will use this thing over here. And then we will place our power over here with half steps. Here we go. Remove that, remove that, remove that. And then connect power. Uh, probably it would be like this, yeah. Here we go. Almost perfect. Nice. Here we go. So, two connections are done and two overflow. No, the one of the overflow is not done. And that one is over there. This is the overflow of concrete. So I think this is the time to actually deal with overflow of concrete. Maybe, maybe not. Not quite sure yet. Also in case industrial beams. Yeah, let's do the beams next. All right, for that we'll be using um Yeah, I think we'll do this on this level. Something like this. And for this matter, we can actually use Mark 1 belts because it's like 10 total of encased industrial beams. Then we can use another one over here, which is flush or not? I don't know yet. Probably yes. Here we go. Totally flush. And how we can work with that? Wait a second. So there are two connections over there. We have also this bizarre connection over here, uh, which sort of a bit in the way, sort of. So there are a lot of things over there, which is also not ideal. Hmm, running out of space to some extent. That's bizarre. <laughs> uh, but, you know, like we can actually work around this. A bit differently, for example, I can totally do something like this, then place the belt like that, and this will work fine. And after that, we are doing the mergers, and probably there will be like another merger over here or splitter. Better splitter, yeah, splitter would be better. Only issue is that I need to weave that probably somewhere here, but this is not a huge issue. So, this will look something like this. Uh, first, I need to aim the bloody thing to output like that, right near the edge. Okay, so this will not work. Why? Because I need a higher platform to start doing things. Also, can we actually start placing things where I want? Hello, game? Oh, come on, game. Seriously? Oh, here we go. I think it is one that I want. Here we go. 
So here we go. This is the aim, aim, and over here we will place the actual pl blah, 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 smart splitter. Where is the smart splitter? It's over here. And oh crap! <sighs> I could not merge them this this way. Huh? But what I actually can do? Wait a second. I'm sort of like overthinking the whole issue. So what I actually can do, I can do the smart split over here. So I can just place this intake, which should be like mark one, and just place the smart splitter on top, like this. And this sort of brings me nowhere, <laughs> to be honest. Oh boy, this is so, so, so annoying. <laughs> oh man, this is really annoying. Alright, so this doesn't really work. What actually can work? Well, when you cannot do things from top, you can always do the things from bottom. Uh, you know, general rule of thumb. Here we go. The first connection here. Uh, not here. There. Then we do Mark 1 logistics, like that. Connection here. Connection there. After that, we need just to make uh, one little hole over here, which we could not really do if we care about, you know, all the things. Naughty, naughty clipping. Although I think like this actually works like legit hole over there. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> So I can totally do it this way, in my personal opinion. Uh, wrong way. So we do it this way. Then we do it this way. And now we need to deal with this hole, which is... Oh no! <laughs> Although, wait a second. I can work around this. This is not like end of the build. I can bring this thing all the way around. It's not an issue. Uh, first we need to deal with this thing. Yeah, for sure we can do things like this way. Can we? Uh, not really. We need to do it a bit like that. This should work. Here we go, and after that, wait a second, why why this di direction is... What the hell? So this is fine, but this is... Could be in this direction, here we go. And now we have something like this. Uh, so this is the edge. And we have the autosave. And, man, this will not really work, I think. So this is like the murder, this is not splitter. Oh boy. <laughs> Why? It could not work from the first try. So I think we will do it a bit differently here. So I definitely can go like something like this, you know? Or maybe even like closer. Here. Here we go. Then we do something like this, which should be Mark Free Logistics. Here we go. And also, this is like all bizarrely shaped, which is I am not a fan of. Okay. Uh, I can actually bring this down. This is not like a huge issue. Just in case. Hmm. 
Yeah, probably I should. So this is all Mark Free Logistics. Here we go. Uh, let's do the Mark Free Logistics. One over here. Then we have what? This is like splitter. Yeah. Then we do one here. Or vice versa. Yeah, I do, do it vice versa. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 -da. Here we go, the splitter that face that way, then we do this this way, then we do this this way, and finally we connect the bloody thing over here. Here we go. This is the way. And now we need to deal with everything that is on this level. Uh, which is basically not a huge deal. So we do Mark 1 belts. Like this. And like this. Then probably we just merge one thing and... So where is a lot of like empty space? Over here. So we bring it over here. We do the merger and then we split it. There. Do we? So then we merge this thing from there, like this, and after that we do the split over here. Yep, that, that will work. Absolutely. So this will look like... Ah, come on. So this is the final one, and over here we are doing the splitter. Where is the splitter? Here is the smart splitter, we are doing overflow. Like... Uh, I need to rotate it properly, like that. Here we go. So this is the smart splitter. Uh, we connect the whole thing with the Mark 1 belt, because only 10 in case beams. Over here we are doing... Connection like that. Here we go. So this is the way where it faces, so any would be overflow, but right would be encased industrial beams for our memorial frames on top. Nice. And this is like the third connection. So now let's connect this to storage containers, because why not? Also, I think this is like almost in line. Ah, no, I have the half steps there, so this will not work, period. But still, like, rather interesting place to start. <laughs> Frankly, I think I will just do it um, through here. Yeah, I will just throw one here. Or maybe here. Then I do like connection over here. And then I just do the whole thing with uh, one belt like this. Here we go. Yeah, this works. So this is the second one. Uh, conveyor lifts mark one, period. And over here we have our. Where is it? Let's copy settings of this plate to here and name it encased industrial beams. Also, I have the caps lock enabled. Here we go. Ah, no enter. Second container done, second connection for the heavy modular frames done completely. Now we deal with the uh, frames. Oh yeah. So another mess over here. Let's remove that. So this should go through top. Because otherwise it's sort of like pain in the every single place. So how we can make it happen? 
So I'm thinking about actually bringing the thing over here, like on the edge, and then just knitting it through here, to there, and having the splitter somewhere over here. Hmm, this can actually work. So here we go, the ceiling mount number one, ceiling mount number two. So we are dealing with what, like, ridiculously low amounts of uh, module frames. So we are doing Mark 1 belts then. Here we go. Let's do the mergers. Merger there. Merger here. Mark 1 belt. Here we go. And now we need to make the split. So we can try to make a split over here. So this is something almost here. So this should be a smart splitter. Is the direction right? Looks so. Then we just do mark one and we are lift. Here we go. Did it connect? I'm not sure. Have no audio. Uh, let's try it again. Oh, in this direction, definitely. Right, so we have connection there. And finally, so we are doing the right overflow. None there, but here we will have modular frames, like that, here we go, and after that we are basically needling that over there, then we are doing, here we go, one, two, and final connection there, this works. And we have the output for heavy module frames there. So first, uh, let's deal with the, well, module frames. All right, this doesn't look fine. Although we have some place over here, so we can totally need all this thing over there. Over here, I mean. Can we? Totally. Also, we can move the conveyor lift like that, so it will not clip through the glass and then we just do this thing over here and after that we are basically so I'm not quite sure what is the better container so let's try with this container for now So over here I can have the smart splitter as well, and bring it over here as well. Is there anything left? Well, we have heavy module frames. This is like important one. Uh, I could not really bring it through here. So it is better to bring heavy module frames on the other side. And for this, maybe I will need to have some extra stuff. Somewhere. I don't know where yet. Let's see. Hmm, so this is everything used over here. Wow. This is dance. This is actually like legitly dance blueprint. Actually, I thought that it would be not so dense, but yeah, it turns out to be quite dense. Right, alright, alright. Let me think. So we sort of use that one. There is heavy module frame connection somewhere there. We can bring it through here. Like this is the opening over here. Definitely. So this is not an issue to bring it into this plane over here. Huh. I don't know. Can we make something like... Wait a second. So what I'm thinking right now is 
Something like that. No, this will not work. Absolutely. Doesn't work. Also, frankly, like, bringing anything through here is not ideal. Because it's, like, half clipping. Yeah, actually, like, having more, um, the reinforced iron plate idea through here is not a good idea as well. So we need to try to do better. Yeah. So if you bring it through here. Yeah, that works. Especially if we do it like this. Can we do it like this? Mm, I would prefer not to. This like 100% clipping. This is also... Like, those arms, they sort of clip. I don't like this. Like, this foundation, you can just hacksaw it away, but man, those, like, manipulators, I don't want to clip for them. Okay, this is very annoying by the lot this moment. So, output of heavy modular frames, once again. Where is it? I already lost it. Ah, it's over here. Bring to other side. Yeah, I can do that. Once again, if I'm bringing it to other side, probably the best place to bring it is over here. And over there. But we have the belt over here. Is this an issue? Actually not. Because I can do things differently. Because I can actually do the things like this. Where I'm using... This stand over here. Then I make connection through here. And ha I have a lot of like empty space over here. So this should work. Uh, is this the correct? Yeah, this is the correct one. So this is the closer connection. But then we can do like the further connection over here. So one of them will be heavy module frames, another one would be uh, reinforced iron plates. Period. Reinforced iron plates is over here. So probably it will look like this for reinforced iron plates. Of course, if I can get the direction straight. This way. Here we go. And yes, of course, it doesn't work. Although, do we have any space over here left? Not really. Sometimes things like that can be a small struggle. I could not connect it this way. But actually, I can make it this way, sort of. Yeah, nobody actually cares about small clip over there. Yeah, here we go. So this is like reinforced iron plates period. Here we go. Uh, now we need to actually make the actual connection through here. So this would be a two mark one conveyor lifts. And there is another one over here. Does it align or not? Good question. It's actually aligned. Wow, perfect. So over here we do the smart splitter. Like that. And over there we have the merger or splitter. Doesn't really matter. Uh, 
So this is all Mark 1 logistics. Here we go. Here we go. And for the smart splitter, we are doing left reinforced iron plates and straight we are doing overflow. All right. That looks decent. Let's actually save the blueprint because sometimes game can, it can actually crash quite a lot when you are doing blueprints like that. Remember to save them or just to have like auto save feature pretty often. All right. So now we need to bring our connection for heavy module frames there. So here we have the actual output. Do we have any like interesting spaces over here? So this looks like an actual place for conveyor lift hull, but nah, no, not really. Where is the connection? It's over there. Also, I can make it into other direction, sort of. Can I? Not really, or can I? I actually can. Wait a second. So this is sort of like in the way. Let's fix that. Yes, it was pretty, but now I'm kind of more worried about proper connections. So let's reconnect that. So this is done. But now I can actually make the hole over there or over here. Uh, is this in a great space place or whatever? Uh, not entirely. But connection is very close. So if I can actually bring it somewhere here, it would be better. And somewhere here is over there. So this totally works in my opinion. If it does not clip for anything here. Yep. Here we go. First, we need to have for this conveyor lift hole like that. And then we are doing this like this. Hmm. How we deal with that? Well, do we deal with this? Probably not. Because we can do something like this, period. How I do a connect? Ah, I'm stuck. Come on. Oh, game. Here we go. So this is intake. This is about like that. Here we go. Nothing fancy over here. Then we do connection down below, which is the first connection over here. Does it line up? No, of course it's not. But at this range, it should not be a... Yeah, here we go. So this is heavy module of frames going down. And this is the hookup spot for heavy module frames, and this is the empty container. So this will work, I guess. Here we go. So this is the heavy module frames. This is, I think, the module frames, if I recall correctly. So, HMF and module frames. Okay. Modular frames. Modular frames. Uh, of course. Here we go. And uh, now we need to make the concrete connection. So where is my bloody concrete? Ah, uh, I think it was just yeah, dingling around there. So this is the concrete connection. And yeah, I can totally bring it over here. Actually, like, I have a lot of, like, empty space over here, surprisingly. So this is the dingly connection there. And let's make it... Hmm...
Um, yeah, this should be fine, probably. So concrete, mark three belts for that. And then we have mark three belt here. And I could not even make things straight. Oh boy. Although it doesn't really matter. So this is the concrete connection. And this is... Uh, this is actually the same axis, so let's make it a bit higher. And let's use it here. So, do I this way? Do I do this way? Yes, probably. Here we go. Alright. So this is sort of like every single connection right now. Hmm. Is it the correct way? Yep. So. Layout. This should be limestone. Two hundred and twenty-five per minute, I think. Something around that. Uh, this should be like iron ore. Is this? Yeah, this is the one. This is actually important. Iron ore. And this should be two hundred and seventy. And finally, we have our coal over here, which would be actually almost like 225, and I actually closed my, well, browser, whatever. Uh, I remember this is like 220 or 219, I will look it up a bit later. So, first of all, let's actually make the sign over here, that is, this is the concrete. Also, let's copy this place this so i need to actually test the bloody thing because before i test these things i uh, these things what before i test this thing this is kind of not a complete setup and i do not want to make the exterior before I actually sure about this thing actually working properly also i need to make the power chains yeah but before i'll just test it with everything like that. Alright, so here is the testing bench. Uh, I'm sort of like tested majority of things over here. There were actually a couple of issues. Uh, first of all, uh, I actually need to change uh, the overclocked uh, steel constructor from here uh, to here because this sort of doesn't work properly with this placement of manifold. So this way overclocked constructor is sort of better. Uh, then one of the connection points over here for the steel pipes, that thing was not working properly, so I reassembled that. Now it's actually working properly, and I actually fixed that in the blueprint. And I was uh, having one belt not in place, so this belt was not in place, so I actually placed that one. And then, well, everything else is pretty much working as intended. Surprisingly, you know, <laughs> uh, all the overflow settings, uh, settings, what? All the overflow systems actually working fine. So as you can see right now, I have the heavy module frame manufacturer disabled, and all things are starting to slowly get into the designated containers, which is exactly how it's supposed to work. And if I enable heavy module frame manufacturer, obviously it will start to take things into the production line, you know? And, wow, lights. Usually these things have no lights because they bug out. It's like very common 
satisfactory bug. But yeah, this is like testing bench. And I think I'm really happy with how things actually turning out. And this means that, well, first of all, I need to make the power chains because this is the creative world where I have no power requirements. So everything just works unless if I just disabled manually. Uh, so there is that. So I need to make the power chains. I need to make the exterior and I need to make the science. So this is it. So this is probably like more like 40 minutes more, I guess. <laughs> yeah. As you can guess, making blueprints is not, uh, well, not fast, definitely not fast gameplay style. But at the same time, if you think the the actual time of mass investment uh, in the proper factories, uh, it's usually not so smaller, like not so faster. Man, what's up with the English right now? <laughs> yeah. Alright, so let's actually redo one thing over here. So over here I had the overclocked uh, constructor like that, and I want to have overclocked constructor over here. Not like that, but like this. So here we go. This is the first fix. And now let's actually make our power chains. Uh, so power chains, first I want to start with the power chains over here. Uh, ha, 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 ha. So this should be something like this, I guess. Two power there. And probably like, uh, man, this is ugly. Man, this is a clipping of the power lines. Although I'm usually not really upset when I clip the power lines, but I prefer to avoid that if possible. But you know, sometimes it's just, yeah, whatever. You know, like you are making space elevator, why you could not do wireless connection, dude? <laughs> this is like science fiction, you know? Why you do not have wireless connections? Or maybe they will do it with uh, Samor and stuff. That would be kind of interesting. Uh, so, this is... <laughs> so, I know for sure that over here I will have the steel beam exterior one. So, this is the extent to which I can have my power switch. And I definitely will be making the power switch over here, 100%. Obviously half steps and... Oh boy, it doesn't work. And it doesn't work because, well, I have the bloody smelter over there. And I couldn't really do anything with that. Huh. So this means that my power switch will go over here, 100%. Alright, I can live with that. Not a huge deal. Also, probably like half step like this. Yep, this will work. All right, all right. Also, wait a second. So I need to think about the painting beams a bit more. So obviously there will be one more here, one more there. Uh, also, yeah, I did not do it properly. Then I have one painted beam over here. And after that, another painting beam should be here. Hmm. Which is sort of like in the way. Is it? Yeah. So will, will I make him? Uh, no, I will not be making something like this. Uh, so probably it will be like that. I don't... I don't know yet for sure. Mm, can place... walls like this. Doesn't really matter a lot. A lot of like extra walls over here, 100%. Just the nature of the beast. So this would be the indentation, the whole thing like that. Probably. Not a huge deal, but, well, still a bit annoying. Yep. Alright, so this is the power switch then. Also, I sort of need to turn it around. Power switch here. Half step like that. 
Uh, will it be one switch? Yes. I don't really need two switches. Uh, only thing that I really want to disable is the heavy module frame assembler, uh, manufacturer. And that's it. And this is mean that uh, it is basically one chain there. And one chain here. So how everything was done on my uh, iron incubator? Was it relatively high? Yeah, relatively high. Something like this. I just want to have the like similar look, you know. So let's connect main chain here, secondary chain there. And let's make the connections there. Oh, alright, could not get here. Alright, where is the... Uh, this is power A. And this will go there. Alright, so the first floor is done. Uh, ha 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 ha. So how we will deal with that? Well, not ideal over there. So this is power chain B. Let's make the power chain B first. Okay. Oh, this is actually sort of nice like that. Here we go. And so over here I want to actually fix uh, Several issues with power for the manufacturer, like this. And also it's bizarre, where is the second connection? Hey, where are you? Scooby dooby doo. Oh, here we go. Uh, and in this fashion actually I want to do something a bit different. We'll be making that. That should work. Yep. After that... Well, I need to aim for yet another outlet over here. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Mm. And pa 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 pa. Uh, it's sort of even like minimal amount of clipping, although yeah. This probably will trigger a lot of people, <laughs> but I am kind of, yeah, you know, where is my wireless power, you know? Alright, so this is like the power chain B, it is done. Uh, now I need to make the power chain A. And for that we need to have more connections like this. Ah, uh, come on, can I get away from here? Yeah, this is why I usually do everything before exteriors, because, yeah, otherwise it would be a pain in one place. And obviously I could not really make anything instantly like this. So this should be... No? No. Okay, so I need to remove that wall. Right. There we go. The first power chain A. And the second power chain A. So over here we'll be doing constructors. Is there any pretty way how I can do this? <laughs> well, actually not really. So I can do something like this probably. Then do something like this, which is and the connection like that. Don't really connect that if I'm intending to use only Mark One. Although I can do it a bit smarter like this. So here we go the connection over there. <laughs> yeah, still. Having two more over here, and for that reason, I think I want to make a bit different way of connecting things, like this, 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 and my cat is saying something very important. Couldn't really determine what. Daniel, ni
Yeah, probably something about, yeah, I want tasty food and stuff. All right, uh, but he have actual full plate of his stuff. Oh. Right, so this would be the connection to here. And then from here, I still need to get power to two constructors. One here, one here, and everything there is powered. Right, that works. And I have like two connections. No, only one connection here. All right, one connection here, one connection there. To here? Wait a second. Can I do this? Ah, sort of. All right. Ah, whatever. Yeah, this will do. I will never actually look inside of this thing, to be honest. And now we need to deal with the final floor. So this is the chain A. Actions like this. Then we do something along these lines. Connection here. Connection there. And we need to make three more connections there. Okay. So this looks like the straight line. And yeah, just a bit of extra clipping over here. So this is sort of like all the power. I know it's not pretty, but mm, once again, where is my wireless power? <laughs> Science fiction, come on. Let's do wireless power. Ah. Uh, so let's actually do the exterior. Also, where was this wall? I have, oh, it probably was here. All right, so exterior. Exterior is actually relatively easy because, well, I have the general idea about exterior. Uh, so, actually, let's make the walls down below, over here, over there. Here we go. And then I need to use the beams to actually cover this gap over here. Here's a beam. Also, I can bring this beam with the half steps a bit closer. So everything is a bit more flush. Half step over here as well. One more beam. I'll then actually paint the whole thing like that. This will do. And everything inside of here. There's a annoying tendency of this piece of, uh, well, walls not to change color immediately. But then if you modify it or reload it, it will actually change the color. This is like the common bug that everybody actually knows about. But well, it's still in the game. Alright, so there is that. Then there is that. This is only for the purpose of making, well, the same color, sort of. Over here. Over there. Over here. And one more over. There. Oh, wait a second. Actually, I need proper alignment for walls upstairs, like this. Here we go. Then I need that. And this is the point where I will be making the glass walls over here. But I'm actually thinking about something different. But first I need to finish the rest of the thing. So, uh, this doesn't work like this. Oh, come on. Uh, why it's always like that? Alright. I need to do things properly. Here we go. Uh, one more here. Oh man, this is like off-center 100%. Uh, so I need to bring the whole thing from down below, like that. Here we go. Delete those. Add those. Here we go. 
And the same thing through here. Only here I have the wall. Here we go. Right. Yeah, <clears throat> this looks correct. Let's add missing walls over here. Missing wall over there. And missing wall over there. And let's recolor the whole thing. To make it a bit more contrast compared to, well, white concrete. Especially if we are doing like um, good colors, like not the good colors, man. Vibrant colors <laughs> on the rest of the thing. Actually having like black concrete is really nice. Also, I need to color those. Oh, but I colored those. All right. Uh, then I'm thinking about the same glass walls as here. But this time around, I want to make like proper columns uh, with a bit different... Uh, come on, why not tool? Cannot work properly. So, I'm he I'm thinking about using only three glass walls over here. So I'm doing something like that, and something like that. But then, for the rest of the thing, I'm doing like basically the column from the well painted beams, like this. It will be a bit different pattern, but for the most part, it's very similar. It's more similar to something that I have done with my remote storage uh, units. Sort of like, kind of the same thing. And I want to make those uh, indentations of sort over here. Hmm, and how I can actually do them? Let me think. So this is a bit odd. <laughs> and this is a bit off center to be honest. So if I want this thing to be that center, it should be starting over here, like that. This is like that center in blueprint terms, vertically. Uh, then I do this uh, one more time, and this one more time. And then I just do something like that. This is the idea. Um, donde estamos? All right. Mm. So this one is. Ah, oh, why it's angled? What the hell? How it's even possible? Wow. How? What? All right. What? Why it's angled? All right. That was weird. Look. Yeah. Wow. All right. Let's do default and still angled. Wow. That's kind of new. Here we go. So this is the idea in terms of like a column. Mm. You know, it's, I would not say that it works 100%, but at the same time, I think it should work. Also, oh, wait a second, there's like small issue. So if I want to make uh, similar columns over here. So here's the first beam, here's the second beam. Here's the third one. And obviously we'll be making those four meter sections over here. So over here, I also want to have this thing like here. But if I'm doing this, in this fashion, I sort of like living up 
leave up this thing with this, which is not ideal. So maybe the whole idea behind this is kind of idiotic. I don't know yet. Uh, let's try something different over here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So this would be a bit higher like that. If I'm doing something similar. And then I'm doing something like this, you know? And sort of, it looks like the same. Mm, maybe, maybe this is the way. Just make think a bit, you know, higher. Also, we can make it a bit more interesting if I would make... You know, why it's angled? Wow. Right. If we make something like this. You know? Different pattern. Instead of like three holes, I can make two. Although I think that doesn't really work. So I think probably I will bring, I don't know. Let's do it like this Just for now. And then we have, once again, angles. Very bizarre angles. Pretty much everywhere. So this definitely doesn't work. <laughs> Is it the same angle? Yes. Same angle, same eighth. And just bring the thing all the way down. Here we go. And over here we have our final bit. That. More bizarre angles from this side, but from this side it's all right. Here we go. Here we go, another one. And this should be the first bit. So this is like the first angle. Oh, uh, let's try the thing. Let's remove that, remove that, and let's play, place our heavy module of frame in Kabulator. And let's see this angle. Is it decent or not? So let's remove that. May it work or not? Mm, sort of bizarre with the windows. Maybe different type of windows. Maybe. So if I replace those windows with something like, you know, those windows. It can work better. In theory. Although I prefer those windows those yeah those windows are kind of a bit plain i want to have a bit more detail so i don't know i don't know i'm not sold on the whole idea of different windows right now and other windows well nah nothing here will work just bunch of extra horizontal lines which i actually do not want to have over here i want to have more verticality in terms of design uh, the colors, uh, man. So wait a second. I think uh, there is one small bit that can actually improve the whole thing like this. Yeah, sort of. That will will look like interesting, you know. Uh, is it though? And this is, like, not precise. Mm, not quite sure. Not quite sure. Not quite sure. 
So actually, if you think about that, there is something to this thing. There is something. 100%. There is something there. So if I want to make something interesting, maybe I need to extend this uh, beam over here and actually bring it lower as I did before. And in this fashion, I will have some sort of like support, angled support over here. Oh, yeah. Alright, so main contention point is over here. Hmm. I think like this is the thing from which I start the whole pattern. That sort of like works nicely with those huge containers. Hmm. That's interesting. That's a new one. Uh, only bit is over here and this bit would be something like that. The top. Here we go. So this is like console or whatever it's called. And then we have this and after that we start with our pattern. Until some point. So we do this, we do this, we do this, this, and this, and even this. And probably this is the last one. Mmm, will it look decently? Not quite sure, not quite sure. Although there are several things that I can do over here to make it a bit more spicy. Also, maybe I will remove the whole angle mm. of all things. Here we go. Here we go, another one. And let's make another side. Ah, come on, don't delete things. And over here, I sort of don't need that actual console like that. But at the same time, I don't know. There's the first, there's the second, there's another one there. There. Yeah, this is a bit bizarre over there. And this one, this like the angle, is definitely bizarre. I don't know, that will not look li right probably. But it's interesting, interesting, to say the least. Here we go. Let's try it out. So let's compare the things. So this one is very crude. Doesn't look like a column. But this one? Mmm, sort of. That's very interesting pattern, to say the least. But this thing kind of ruins the whole concept, I think. Maybe. Maybe not. Hmm. If I remove that, it will look funny, for other reasons. Hmm. That's interesting. This one more robust, 
this one more elegant. Couldn't really choose which one is better. Well, meanwhile, let's actually do the rest of the thing. Because couldn't really, like, stop and think for, like, 20 minutes which one is better. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, this one from the below. There we go. Uh, this one was not from the beginning to end. Here we go. 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 And the final one with the nudge. That. Like this. This is probably like the most repetitive part out of the whole blueprint. Where you kind of sort of like just do your thing and chill. Everything else is pretty like demanding in terms of what you are doing. You know? Here we go. And this one should be a column. Sort of. Did I even color this thing? No. Why? Wait a second. That's bizarre. Hmm. This one is not colored. Here we go. So once again, which one is the winner? I think this sharp angle sort of have the vibe. But you never know. So let's try to do two front uh, columns. Let's start from those. Yeah, at this point I'm definitely like low energy, <laughs> doesn't really want to talk. I want to finish this blueprint, come on! All right, so this is like the first. Which one is better? Like, you know, like you're running around and then like, is this sharp angle is better than that? I don't know. That's bizarre. Also, if you think about it, probably can do something like this. And th this will sort of like smooth the angle. Also, this is probably not necessary because I can do something even better. And this would be something like this, you know? And can do the same even further down there. From here, for example. 
and do something like this and just bring those two things down below like that so maybe this is the solution maybe maybe not Let's dismantle all those there. So it definitely doesn't work, in my opinion. Or maybe I just do something more similar to the first blueprint and just retain non-filled column, hm, maybe. Oh, wait a second. Here we go. Maybe this is the way. All those consoles just add too much, I don't know, like rigidity to construction. While something like this with holes over there adds a bit more of like it becomes a bit more airy, you know, if it even is a bird, <laughs> you know, airy. Yeah, probably this is like the bird, whatever. Um, so let's actually make more. Here we go. Why do I not stop? Do not snap? The hell? That's bizarre. Here you go, one more there, one more here, and over here, here we go, and then do the column like that. So the good question here, maybe I still need to make those glass walls all the way from there to there. You know, there is like overlap over here, which I don't really enjoy. So probably my first call was way better. So doing something like this makes a bit more sense. Probably. Yeah, there is the wipe. Also, I want to do something different for the central thing. And this time around, I'm thinking about something a bit more... Like this. I don't know. The bigger one. This may work. Oh, come on. Although I'm not quite a fan of this part. This looks complete. Yeah, this is like complete junk. <laughs> no, this will not work. Something different over here, 100%. Mm, maybe a different angle, I don't know yet. Maybe just do something, you know. 
like this. But that doesn't make any sense. To be fair. Uh, whatever, let's do the rest of the thing for, for a while. And then return to the central thing. I always can do just the same pattern as before. It's not really like an issue. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, no, 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 no. Here we go. Slowly getting there, but still quite far away from the whole finished exterior. So let's actually add all the glass walls all the way around. Here we go. And let's save the blueprint. Alright, so let's see how those two things actually compare. So it's different for sure. Hmm. So I definitely need to make something different in the center or on top. Or whatever. And I'm not quite sure do I really want to fill the whole thing. Like over here, over there. Before that I need to sort out the central pattern over here. What that can be actually interesting, let me think. So just squares. That'll be sort of funny. You know, just do something like this. Just some dorky thing. <laughs> like, you know, the ladder. Uh, it's kind of funny, but kind of useless. Although maybe there is something in this pattern. I don't know. Yeah, but it's completely different style, to be fair. So this will not work. Alright. Do I do the wheat patterns once again? <laughs> I don't want to do like the whole... Maybe like the flowers and stuff, but this will require a lot of space. It's a bit bigger than... Yeah, it's like exactly half of the blueprint, so this will overlap with the window, so could not really do that. Although maybe I can do it like half flower? Huh. Half flower can work. Wait a second. Uh, but then... Hmm. 
it's all over the place in terms of other things. I don't know. Mm. Where was this blueprint? I think there was some drill rigs with that. No, it was not. Uh, it was more of o an oil. Do I have any oil here? Art Deco cover cup, Deco refinery top, Art Deco refinery cup, uh, side, towers archival cover yellow leaves. Yeah, so this is the pattern. Can I actually implement that pattern or not? Or at least like half pattern. So when I'm doing the half patterns, this should be like triangle. So I can make something similar. For example, I can go for something like uh, this, this. Hmm. And then it should be something like going over there, then over there. And frankly, it doesn't look like a flower. The other in the half pattern. So I need to remove a lot of. Yeah. Doesn't look. Although, wait a second. I can do something even. sort of like interesting. So I can sort of make those sunbeam shapes. You know? Something like this. That's sort of interesting. Although there is an issue with that. And this issue that I want to have the gradient. And this doesn't exactly work with the gradient. Unless if I'm doing something like this. But then there is not enough gaps. Like exactly zero gaps. Which sort of defeats the purpose. Unless if I'm doing something different like this. But once again, there is not enough gaps. So this sunbeam pattern is sort of like whatever. Or is it? Wait a second. Uh, not exactly there. It doesn't make any sense. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's interesting. Yeah, probably like with patterns. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Wait a second. Why I need to have several different patterns? Maybe I just do two more in the center over here. Or just... Yeah, why I need to have something very similar that I done previously? I don't need to have the similar thing. Absolutely. I can do things differently. Only issue here... Ah, uh, man. No, this will not work. Uh, the windows. So I could not have like half window, but I can remove one window, for example, from the center. Then it can work. But it would be very similar. And only one pattern for this blueprint. Which is, I think, alright. Especially if like every single blueprint will be different. So I'm planning to do several more in this style. Uh, so... Maybe this is the way. Also, I probably should have done those cross bracings from the one beam, not two beams, but whatever. I will do better on the other side. Mm. Oh man, this is a lot of the same things. But 
Uh, if it is the same thing, then probably I can do something like this. Not quite sure yet. But maybe this is the style. Ah, come on. Also, I can work with those. And... Oh, wait a second. This is... Wow. Wait a second. This is interesting. I'm sort of like digging the central pattern. Yeah. This can actually work, although there are a lot of like vertical lines, not a fan. But with a gradient, maybe it will be not so prominent. So let's remove all unnecessary things over here. Let's see. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. Maybe there is uh, the point about removing those. Oh yeah. And even those, but then the windows will look odd. Couldn't really do those. But there is something about that. Yeah, making this gap. Oh. This is interesting for sure. So let's jam with that. Uh, so how it's done. I have one meter here, one meter here, and from this point I just do something like this, I think. Wait a second. What's the exact ratios? There is that. Then 5.6 and 11.31. So this is the exact angle. 5.6. Eight point something, eight point something. Uh huh. Eleven there. One like this, and wait a second. Something like this, and something like this. Two over here, and remove the central thing. Like at all. Yeah. Remove the central thing. Well, I think I got the pattern. Yeah. That starts to look like a decent thing. Like, enough verticality and a lot of, like, horizontal pattern. Yeah. Maybe a bit too much on the edges, but I'm counting on the gradients. So when I will do the gradient, it will look not as like monolith like right now. All right, come on. Two point eight, two point eight. Then we are doing eight point four, eight point four. Then we are doing. Uh, 8.4, 8.4, no, oh, 8.4 over here, 2.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1
2.8 and from here we are doing 11.3 here we go we are removing that one we are adding two over here yep this is the correct pattern also can i extend that no cannot yeah this is odd can I remove that? Sort of. Mm. Yeah, this is like annoying those like small gaps. You know. But we can work with that. Nothing really odd. Just a bit extra concrete over here. And in this fashion I can do something like this, you know. Although I think for like for this amount of intakes, yeah, this indentation is definitely a bit too much. Maybe. Maybe not. At the same time I can do interesting things like this, for example. Uh but then it's sort of mess up the whole thing over here uh, then it would be something like this man this is too much yeah i think it should be like this Also, it could be like this. Hmm. Yeah, this is a bizarre space over here. Not quite sure what I will do here. Alright, let's the finish the final side and let's do the gradients. Because, yeah. I need to wrap the whole thing. Eleven point eight point four there, eight point four there, two point eight here, two point eight here. 11.3 here, 2.8 here, and another 11.3 here. Then we are doing one over here, one over there, and we are removing that one over here. So this is the pattern. Yep. So we have all the structural elements in place. Let's see how it looks together. All right, here we go. Mm, I would say decent. This is an interesting look. Definitely different compared to that one. You know, like a bit more centric, a bit more like barcode -y. Actually, yeah, there's something like barcode about this thing. If you think about it. Also auto save. So first of all, uh, all right. Let's go for that CSS gradient.io. I think I will be using the same colors as I have done on my Iron Factory. Because I generally I want to have the same colors, although this is like different patterns. I want to have the same colors for the same tiers, sort of. So like for steel, for iron, for rotors. I want to have like this yellow and red and then when I will be doing like things like for example computers and electronics I want to have some sort of like bluish colors and later if I will be pulling off factories that are doing like supercomputers maybe I'll be doing yet another color so I want to color code you know like different stages of the game 
uh, but for different factories I in the same tier I just want to have different patterns probably yeah something among those lines so do I do yellow in center on front or red in center on front mm. let's do this all right so this is yellow and there will be yellow on the other side here we go so then there's uh, the second step over here uh ha 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 here we go one two three four uh yeah so let's add the corners be the third color is it like third color what the fuck yeah looks almost the same yeah and this lighting the angle over here angle over there Oh yeah, it start to get the shape. Oh, look at this beauty, man. This is so nice. Oh yeah, I totally overdid myself on this one. This is nice pattern. Especially like in the middle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alright, another step. Another step, and finally we'll have the red, the bloody red. Here we go. Painting beams. Actually, uh, yes, if you do not actually know, you can actually press button G, and this will add the filter, and in this fashion you can just color everything without fearing to color everything. You know, sort of. Also, like, I'm an idiot. You know why? Because I colored blueprint. <laughs> that is plopped! <laughs> oh boy, I did color the whole thing outside of the blueprint designer. Oh man, I don't remember. Can you actually sample that? But then if I can sample it, I will not be able to actually load it because it's flush with the... Uh, Ah, the whole thing. Yeah. Alright, so I will pause the recording for now. I will struggle a bit recoloring the whole thing and I will be back to get some finishing touches. Alright, on top of the whole thing my game actually crashed. So yeah, I spent like 10 extra minutes actually relaunching things and coloring the whole thing once again. But we are over there. Actually, let's save the whole thing because, well, uh, if the game actually crashed once then it will start crash even more. Because more complex is your blueprint, then more times it can crash. Sort of like the huge deal when you are doing the things like I do. Uh, a lot of people actually not aware, but yeah, the whole blueprint system, it fucking crash a lot. Like, quite a lot. But yeah, people think that Satisfactory is perfect game. I'm just... You know, like, when I actually mentioned this on Reddit, I was like downvoted into oblivion, yeah. Apparently people think that this game doesn't crash, <laughs> which is not true. All right, whatever. All right, so. But that if game crash, it doesn't mean this game bad, you know. It means this game needs a bit more polish, you know. A bit more. So let's remove that, add that. So this is our lighting. Let's add more of those things. Let's use the half steps with the notch tool once again. Because this is the best thing ever. 
since update 5, I think. Yeah, update 5 was, like, huge in terms of making interesting things, you know? Uh, also, why it doesn't stop. Here we go. But update 8 with the notch tool, man. And the whole blueprint designer before that. This just made the satisfactory into a very decent game. Only thing that I really wish for, well, satisfactory, outside, like, you know, 1.0 things, you know, all this Sam or stuff, that they will add more, like, uh, you know, exterior pieces, like exterior styles. For example, right now we have, like, asphalt, concrete, and steel with sort of steel or plastic, I don't know. Uh, but I really want to have something like wood, for example, you know, all these different like textures and patterns. This would be really nice to have, because right now it's a bit limited, even though it's way better than it was before. Right, so this indentation. Will I actually make any adjustments over here? Man, I have no idea. So first of all, I think like the whole science should be on top. And of course, it's a bit annoying. So this would be a, a like this. And then I will probably take this over here and. I will do something like HMF switch over here. Uh, hmm. Then I will do just simple legend so people actually understand what is where. Like I done over here. So people will not connect the mains to the actual heavy module frame chain. Ah, uh, come on. Can I select you, please? Here we go. And this is still, like, a bit bizarre. There's all the space over here. Also, I want to... color my switch to black. Because of reasons. And I actually need to make all these exterior labels. So once again, if you've never done that, I'm just using, the, you know, like, painted beams everywhere. Like that. This is like temporary solution before I actually remove them. Because I need like snapping point. And after that I'm using all those... Oh, what was that? Okay. That was something. Uh, then I'm using organization, square meter, one meter science, and I'm using notch tool with the half steps, once again. If you do not know how something is done, well, after update 8, the answer is always like notch tool. With the half steps <laughs> and painting beams. Like, yeah, anything bizarre is always like painting beams. You know? This is like satisfactory. Here we go. Here we go. Almost there. I'll remove all extra things. But I need to do it together. Here we go. So now let's do this. This. Uh, uh, come on, come on, come on. Here we go. Reinforced iron plates. Reinforced. Reinforced. All right. So here we have heavy. Ah, oh, come on. Heavy. Ah, oh, what is that? Okay. One more time we have heavy over here. And over here we have module frames. One more time module frames. Oh boy, almost there. Almost there. Almost there. Encased industrial beams over here. Which is basically like sneakers. <laughs> I don't know why I have this bizarre parallel, but for me it's like sneakers, you know? 
Although I'm not a fan of sneakers, I'm more of like a uh, Milky Way guy. You know, like in Russia, we have this like Mars, which is basically like Milky Way in America. It's really bizarre. The same company, but uh, two different products and they taste differently. So yeah, the Milky Way in America is basically like Mars in Russia. And I actually haven't seen a lot of like Milky Way, uh, Mars bars in America. I think I saw them like once when I was working there. So yeah, it's definitely bizarre for me. But I was a fan of those, you know, Milky Ways, American ones. Right, and this one, wait, what is this? Concrete, 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 concrete. Oh, come on. Mushing buttons like crazy. Here we go. All right, so also, also, wait a second. I totally forgot about that one. What is that? Why do you snap there? What the fuck? The hell? That's very strange. So this is something bizarre with my controls right now. Oh, here we go. That was strange. So how much I can fit over here? Probably like all the way. From here to there. Yeah. Something like this. Hmm, I sort of can do this thing like here, but then I could not really bring this beam over here. Also, I think these connections will not work properly, although... Yeah, there is a wiggle room. If you all know what you are doing, this is not an issue over here. But it can be janky with the conveyor lift. I don't remember. Need to test that. And here's my phone. Alright, so this is uh, pretty much the finished blueprint. And we are using a total of 16 power shards, which is way less than we used in previous blueprint, which is win-win. So yeah, I'm definitely uh, a bit better than in this blueprint, for example, where I have been using 25 power shards. Uh, but most importantly, it have the same sty style. Oh man, what was that? Uh, so I can actually plop one like this, then I plop one next to it. Over here, for example. And we get ourselves uh, the first glimpse of the personal storage. So yeah, this is quite nice blueprint. Also, obviously, obviously, to have the full package, we will need to get the manufacturer on top. To connect a bunch of conveyor lifts. Obviously, color that into black, because why not? I'm sort of like curious, so... If you are using this as a personal storage form, you, you, know, you know, like typical ground level. Oh boy, you just will never see the manufacturer. Wow, this is sneaky. So you definitely will see the manufacturer from far away and from top. But if you do not know that it is there and you are just using this as a personal storage, this is like basically perfect cubes. Wow. <laughs> oh man, I'm digging this. This pattern in the middle. This is solid. This is really solid. Love it. Uh, the indentation over here, maybe I will do it. Maybe I will make it a bit better. I don't know. I uh, still need to fiddle quite a bit with this blueprint. But this is like, at this stage, it's more about like polish. About just making small adjustments. Uh, the general thing about the blueprint is basically done. There is nothing to change over here. The exterior is done. All the labels are done. You know, yeah, this is nice thing. Also, yeah, I want to have some sun on the sides. So this is the back. Yeah, this is quite nice match. Oh, actually, you can see the manufacturer from the back. That's interesting. <laughs> all right, all right. So this was a very long video. If you are still watching, well, you are a hero, or you never played Satisfactory and stuff, you know? 
<laughs> welcome. Welcome to Satisfactory. Yeah, this game takes quite a lot of time. Especially if you are doing something like interesting. Uh, yeah, the time can go by, well, really fast. So, uh, let me see. How long is this video? Oh boy, I think it will be like three hours. Maybe even four. Oh boy. Oh yeah. This is like four hours. It will be like in several minutes, it will be exactly four hours. Um, yeah, when people claim that they actually spent like 100 hours making five blueprints, it's also not true. Because if you have the rough idea, well, this is the actual time spent making the blueprint. Obviously, like small tweaks can take some time. Even when I was like bad at making blueprints, it was maybe like six hours. But definitely not like 10, 20 hours to make the blueprint. Especially when you know what, what you are actually doing. And here's the thing, over here I was talking a lot. But to be fair, if you are not talking, you will be probably working faster. So I bet I can make the whole thing in like 3 hours if I'm not talking. 100%. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. This was highly requested video. And I finally done it. Thank you very much for watching, have a nice one, and Yakis out.